لو كان سلعة تباع لبذلت فيه الأموال العظام أو صعد في السماء لسمت إليه نفوس الكرام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وكم all listeners and viewers to yet another podcast episode with Atibian which is a project dedicated to helping examine with knowledge contemporary affairs happening in the Muslim communities Likewise, we discuss topics such as studying in Saudi Arabia, benefiting from some of the most prominent Islamic scholars of today, how to apply to the different universities, juggling marital life, along with studies, self-improvement, education, books, and much more. Today, we're welcome to have uh, a beautiful guest with us from Sweden, our brother Abu Abdullah Sadiq, who is here uh, visiting from Medina. Hayak Allah. Allah How are you doing, It's good to have you. Alhamdulillah, it's fine, it's fine. It's an honor to be on the podcast. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. How are you liking uh, Riyadh so far? Uh, it's nice, man, but it's big. It's huge. I'm not really used to the size of it, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's huge. It's yeah, huge. Yeah, it's huge. But it will be so similar to your cities back in Sweden, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But oh. I've, I've, I've gotten accustomed to the like small city life in Medina, mm-hmm. and, um, the small city vibe. So yeah. coming here is a big difference, man. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. It's... Um, you know, one of the reasons we like to bring on different guests uh, are people who can help bring Tibian to the podcast. Yeah. People who have studied, people who have some type of qualifications, some people who can help explain things. And alhamdulillah, yeah. um, as we're going to get to in your story, I mean, you obviously finished your magister at Jam Islamia and also your your, your uh, BA as well. So we'll get into that. But before we get into that, inshallah, we had a few uh, weekly episodes or weekly announcements, rather, and updates. Uh, and the first one was dealing with Muhammad the Wali you had a program studying for Ramadan. So can you give us a brief explanation of that? Yeah, alhamdulillah, it's that time of the year again, Allah Akbar. Um, alhamdulillah, Ramadan is around the corner. Uh, I think we might fast on Wednesday or maybe Thursday, alhamdulillah. So with Ramadan comes the Ramadan Tafsir course, alhamdulillah, Tafsir program. I think it's the third year we're doing it, alhamdulillah. First year we tried to do the whole Quran. Uh, we did it only than 10 Jews. Saki, we try to do the whole Quran again. <laughs> Explaining the whole Quran, tafsir. Yeah, I mean, not doing ayah for ayah, ayah. Mm. Just basically, it's sort of um, what they call tafsir mujman mm. or tafsir mawdu'i. Actually, more like tafsir mawdu'i, sort mm. of, uh, where you talk about each surah, its main themes, and you explain a group of ayat mm-hmm. based on the meaning of those ayat, and you take some takeaways. Second time we've done half the half of the Quran, Alhamdulillah, last year. Mm-hmm. So I promise the students this year we'll do the second half. So Montage. inshallah by the end of this Ramadan we'll have finished the Quran, inshallah <laughs> ta'ala. So <laughs> that's one thing. And many other courses as well. Um, uh, one short course on the fiqh of fasting, Montage. essentials. And another probably one day seminar on the fiqh of dua because end of the day it's, it's Ramadan. Mm. It's the month of Quran and it's also the month of dua. Montage. The best opportunity, especially if you make dua that is accepted, that fulfills the shurut with correct adab mm. on in Laylat al-Qadr, يعني, that mm. could change your life. Sahih. And it could change your life throughout the whole of month Ramadan. So now, that's as well yeah. another Now one. your fiqh uh, lesson, is that going to be in the beginning of Ramadan or throughout the entire month? No, that one actually, I already, I already started. Oh, um, I'm, I'm teaching it to the private community and then uploading as a self-paced course. Yeah, good. So it's going to be uploaded as a self-paced course. So not all of the courses are live. Some are live and some are self-paced. The Quran reading course, the Tajweed course, they're all uh, recorded lessons that I've done before, but I've kind of repackaged them as a self-paced course with questions and quizzes and broken up into 10-minute sections and the likes. So all of that, inshallah, will be put on the uh, learning portal, inshallah. So okay. I think in total about six courses. Yes, yeah, beautiful. Maybe beautiful. two that are live and the rest are self-paced. Just I'm for there. people to, to keep yourself busy. Hey, in the Jimmy, month of Ramadan Jimmy. and you can sign up and you can join whichever those courses that you like inshallah ta'ala. yeah and I'll put the link in the description inshallah yeah, so people can and an Arabic yeah. class as well but that one is Mom-tas. after Ramadan inshallah so Mom-tas. Mom-tas. you actually Mom-tas. reminded Mom-tas. me this week um, on Friday Sheikh Umar Al-Umar he had a Dora, which was nice no. he went over uh, Umda Ahkam the Kitab Al-Siyam and alhamdulillah we started after Asr we finished at Isha it was very nice it seemed like most of the Sharh he was going through uh, was um, facing Mubarak's Sharh, yeah. which is Khulasat uh, Al-Kalam, Fi Umdat Al-Ahkam. And he gave a lot of different taliqat also from Sheikh Ben Bas, because yeah. also, obviously the Sheikh is uh, a student of Sheikh Ben Bas. So that was that was very nice, alhamdulillah. We had a daura at Sheikh Ali's Masjid as well, same time mm, actually. MashaAllah. Uh, by Sheikh Khalid Al-Sarhid, mm. who used to be a Qadi, mm. 
Actually, we sat with him with Sheikh Ali. We had a little sitting after Fajr mm. on Friday. It was me, him, and Sheikh Ali al-Haddadi. And Masha, he has a very interesting backstory, mashallah. Mm. He used to be a Qadi. Now he's a uh, Ustad, Jami' al-Majma'. So he did the exact same thing, Umdat al-Ahkam. Mashallah. Kitab al-Siyam. Same times as well, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Mm. So mashallah, there's a lot of nashat happening. Yeah, yeah. Did he finish it in one day or two? No, he finished it, alhamdulillah. He finished okay. it. Yeah. And he might do Kitab al-Zakah as well. Uh, Two weeks from now. Okay. So that is masjid, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Also, I, um, I don't know if you've seen. I posted on the status. I did a little small thing with the youth here, which was very beneficial. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, it was nice. I actually saw that one. You seen it? Yeah, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, it, it was nice. Alhamdulillah to yeah, sure. get with the youth and the young boys. Actually, it's well, it's well overdue. Yeah. To be honest, they they need somebody to help them and you know guide them. In. And honestly, it's a it's an honor. So. Um, it was nice to teach in person as well. Eh? It was very nice to teach in person. Yeah. And I think last time was when you went to America a year ago or yeah, two yeah, years. Something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We used to have a Sunday school as well back in uh, the States in Pittsburgh yeah, sure. for the youth. So that was a nice program as well. At any rate, um, yeah, let's jump into it. Um, so, uh, Brother Sadiq, yes. Abu Abdullah, you have, first off, give us a little bit of a background. Give the viewers a little bit of your background coming up. Growing up in Sweden, how was it? Um, I'm assuming you grew up in Sweden yeah. your entire life. Okay, tell us about that, inshallah. Yeah, so, um, oh, sorry. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I grew up in Sweden. I was born in Sweden, raised in Sweden as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I was born in like a small city outside of Stockholm, maybe two, three hours away from Stockholm, the, mm. the capital. Mm. And then we moved to the capital when I was about three or four years old. Mm. Uh, and I've lived there ever since. And... The thing is, my, my mother and father as well, mm. when I was young, they wanted us to get a, an Islamic upbringing. Mm. So they wanted us to memorize Quran. So we went That's to right. the regular Duxi and everything. But Duxi, explain that for yeah, the listeners. Duxi, yeah, yeah, for all the Smaller listeners that won't be <laughs> Quran needed, school. But, <laughs> but it's a sort of a Quran school where you go weekends, like mm. Saturday, Sunday, and you study Quran with the teacher and you memorize and you read and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but my mom was feeling like, it's not as it's go, It's not going as well as it should. Mm. Like it's only two days a week. Yeah. And it's, there are a lot of students, and we don't get the time that we need it's and fine. all of that. Mm. So one summer we actually went to Egypt, and she liked it. Mashallah. So she was like, and she saw that other Somali families were staying and like teaching the kids Quran and Arabic and going to school and like yeah, yeah. having an everyday life. Yeah. So she kind of sprung it on us. I'm staying, and whoever wants to stay stays. So we stayed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was funny though because we weren't really expecting it I, I had plans I had plans <laughs> I was 10 years old but I had plans back in Sweden you know and so yeah so we stayed for about 4 years and mm. uh, studied Arabic memorized the, Arabic, mes memorized the Quran went to school there and all that okay. it wasn't because sometimes when I say I stayed in Egypt for that long people think that it was a talab al-ilm stay like going to the Arabic uh, Marrakis the mm. centers yeah. Iban and stuff like that yeah. it, it really wasn't that so we had home tutors, so mm. they would come and tutor us in at home, and then we would go to a regular school like every other kid. Yeah. Uh, and then we did that for basically between to four years, like two. I was there for two thousand three to two thousand seven. Okay, Montez. And then you went back to Sweden. And then we went back to Sweden, mm. and yeah, I did the what do you guys call it? High school. Yeah, yeah. yeah high, school. high school, college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's got their name on it. Yeah. So yeah, so I did that, and then I graduated, and then. Uh, that was actually the like the, the time in my life that where I was interested in talab al mm. So before uh, I knew the Quran and I spoke Arabic actually fluently, but I wasn't really interested mm. in talab al and studying Islam and stuff like that. It was kind of just an upbringing. Yeah, it was just like it came normally. It came with the package. Yeah. So yeah. Nice package to have. <laughs> Mashallah. <laughs> so yeah, so I got interested in Islam and started reading a, a, a lot more and got interesting. In, like, I just wanted to take my deen seriously. Yeah. So I started going to lectures and everything, and then afterwards. I got interested because there was actually one feeling I loved with Islamic knowledge is because I had the uh, Quran, mm. so to speak, and I understand like bits and parts of it. Mm -hmm. Some obviously some parts of Quran need tafsir, mm -hmm. but some of it is like in it's clean clear. Arabic, yeah, yeah clear yeah. Arabic. So what that did for me when I was when I went to the lectures is it really opened up my memorized knowledge, so to speak. So. Mm. I I listened to the lecturer or the sheikh saying this is the this is the verse that's evidence for this matter in the religion and this, this is 
uh, in context with this. This is when you're back in Sweden. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I, so actually, it was great because I was. It's almost like you're carrying a package and you don't know what's in it, and someone opens yeah, it up yeah, to you and yeah. says, "This is this, and this is that, and this yeah. is that." That's actually that's actually a good point. Even uh, not even as far as the tafsir aspect, but isn't it even as having that uh, vocabulary? Yeah. Like a brother, I remember a brother who's from Pittsburgh. He went to go study. He was already half of the Quran for the most part. Yeah. Arabic came almost natural to him, Mashallah. learning it in the Mahab, where everyone else yeah. is struggling and trying to memorize. Yeah. You, you have a vocabulary with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, just I'm need to unpackage, that. like you said, yeah. unpackage that that mm. uh, package you have. But even just the pronunciation, mm. actually, a lot of people, they overlook it or they underestimate the importance of being able to pronounce the Arabic letters mm. fluently. Yeah. So a lot of people that want to learn Arabic who maybe became Muslim or have another native tongue and they're completely new to them, they really struggle with the beginning just actually saying the words yeah, exactly. or recognizing the sounds so, yeah. is like so, like what yeah. is this you yeah, know yeah, yeah. so just having that along with the vocabulary like you said it's uh so memorizing the quran is actually a good step towards yeah, learning yeah, it's a good package, no, really yeah, sure. the scholars also always mention that they you it makes you strong straight no, so, so it makes you really eloquent in speech yeah. and no. it gives you another fasaha another eloquence so, hey, so, hey. hey. Hey, what's well, so going on? So you were um, now you're starting to learn the tafsir along with the things yeah, that you're learning. Yeah, uh, learning the ahkam of the Quran and mm. the ahkam of fiqh and like this is evidence for this and so on. So that's what actually that's when I basically I fell in love with the Islamic knowledge and I sort of uh, wanted to study more. Mm-hmm. So I asked uh, around. I was like, where are you guys getting this knowledge? This knowledge, like, what, where have you studied? And which year is this? This is about, about 2011, 12. Mm, so you're in, you're finishing up high school. I finished, I finished oh, I finished yeah I finished 2011 so 2012 actually I applied for it oh, alhamdulillah so yeah. I asked them and they said like we've studied in Medina and there's this great university and you've got scholars and you got everything and I was like really I want to <laughs> apply so they some of the brothers jazamallah khair they told me the steps and they sort of helped me with the whole process of application mashallah uh, I applied 2012 and at the time the application process was taking a year so you uh, you applied this year and you would expect to get a call back next year. Yeah, and forget and about it until y- the next year. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> so the advice was always like, continue on with your life, keep working, keep studying, and then if it comes, it comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. so I did that. It didn't come to the next year. And I was like, I, 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 the advice was ignore it, but you can't really ignore it because you're really waiting for it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm waiting around and like putting my life on hold and stuff like that and just waiting for the opportunity yeah the opportunity i don't know about you guys we had a website called uh, it's called medina students i can't remember i remember i know that the british one. one yeah the british one it was my morning routine <laughs> wake up wake up coffee <laughs> yeah, check fun. medina students yeah, no yeah, update yeah. <laughs> I, I think i remember that i think they sometimes they would put up like uh american students sometimes they'll give like they some would, type of ishara to yeah, where you can yeah, find yeah. it at least yeah they I think were focused the same on thing. the british students like sort of to asif. no yeah but, <laughs> but, but, but they would give the list they'll give the updates they'll give the updates yeah and no jazallah khair i don't even know who's who was running that but yeah. I got a I lot think it was Ismail Bomont, no? I have Ahim no Allah. idea. I have no idea. Allah, no I don't know, but I'd make dua for that yeah. brother because yeah. I, I got so many, so much information from that like, oh, yeah, website. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It was so beneficial. Uh, so I was waiting around, yeah. I, I even like uh, like marriage and stuff like that. I'm like, no, I'm not getting married now. I'm, 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 this is my yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Khalas, I'm going to seek some knowledge. So the year came, the, like the year finished, the next year came and no update. And now I'm asking brothers, like, what's going on? Mm. You told me a year. It's been a year. <laughs> what's happening, man? So uh, some of the brothers went to the Imada. And subhanAllah, that year, there was a big, like, I don't know. I really don't. Till the end, I don't know what the issue was. But mm. the names wouldn't come back from Wazarat al-Ta'lim, mm. the, the Ministry of uh, Education. Mm. Uh, so I was just waiting. And then it came the next year, like 2014. 14 mm. but in may so i'm like i'm i'm at my work and i get the, a, a ton of calls everyone's congratulating me and everything and i was like what's going on so a brother actually because whatsapp and stuff like that was new at the time so you couldn't really call you could just text yeah so a brother called me from saudi all the way to sweden to just, just tell you yeah, you bro you got you got in congratulations and stuff like that Allah that year so, must it must have happened i mean i remember i think it was that year yeah probably that year I went to Hajj Mashallah. with uh, Brother Saeed Khala from Sweden. Yeah, sure Mashallah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, shout out to Yeah, we went Hajj together, that brother, me and that brother. Um, and uh, I applied as well in Medina. Mashallah. He took me to the guy who's in charge of the Europeans and everything, did the muqabala. Mm. And it was like, I was really, really optimistic of getting accepted that year. Yes, but it didn't come through, like, no. like you've mentioned. Then I got accepted in KSU, I think 2013, and I still went Medina. I was like, I have to find out what's happening. <laughs> yeah. 
As soon as I came to KSU, oh, okay. <laughs> two days later, I'm like, I'm going to have to go to Medina and see what happened. So I went there, met the same guy, and he checked the system and he's like, you should have been accepted. What happened? Even he was shocked. Ajib. I was like, خلي, خلي, I'm going to go to Saudi Arabia. Allah Akbar. So that year, I think uh, yeah, a lot of people must have been affected with no, that. No, no, no. And when did you accept again? I guess it was 2012. Medina? Yeah, Medina. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, I went in the winter time, so it was the beginning of 2012. Ajib. December, January ish. Yeah, yeah alhamdulillah. No. Then, I, then I got accepted also to Jamaat Imam the same year. Then I so I left Khuruj Nihai and came back September oh. to Jamaat Imam. So yeah. the summer break, I went home just to get ready to go back to Riyadh yeah. instead of going to Medina. Nice, yeah. man. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Inshallah. Now, so yeah, now, so I got accepted, uh, but I wasn't able to travel because like May, the school year is about to finish. Mm. So they basically told me like just wait until and, September. Yeah, until September, you, mm. you come with the new year. Mashallah. So that's what I did. I actually entered the Mamlaka. I think. I even remember the date. It was 17th September 2014. Allah Akbar. So, yeah, and I, and I had never been to Medina. I had never been to, like, Medina, Mecca, mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. So I came, I got into Kulia. Uh, I skipped Mahad, mm. obviously, because I knew Arabic. Yeah. Uh, I got into Kulia. I went to sure, completely skipped it. Yeah, Did completely it? skipped yeah, it. Yeah, and Jamal Samir, it's normal to do. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. normal. Oh, you've got... Is it different For here? us, it's kind of mandatory. I think now they're, they're getting a little bit more lax, but you had to at least do Musarrabah. Why was that? Because from the conditions of getting to Kuliya for Tulab Amina yeah. was to make sure that your Arabic is at a proper level and that also your grades doing that Arabic uh, is at a proper level. So you couldn't get into Kuliya unless you had uh, J. Jit in a mum test. Okay. So yeah. you couldn't even test out? Like No, no, no. They were no, just, no. you had to go through same it. Same thing with KSU as well. I knew Arabic, but they said same thing. You have to at least do one year. And um, I think the main reason is because we got accepted to the Ma'ad, mm. not the Jami'ah. Oh, okay. So the Ma'ad accepted you, and then the Ma'ad kind of like does Tarshih and says, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. we uh, nominate the student to be accepted okay. in the Jami'ah. Yeah. So we didn't apply to the Jami'ah directly. Ah. So, yeah. so your acceptance is contingent upon you finishing Ma'ad, basically? Yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty like, much. we initially got accepted as Ma'ad students. Yeah. So even after we graduated from Ma'ad, uh, we get our certificates from the Ma'ad, and, and then, then they, they pull your names up. And then, yeah, they, yeah, they, they nominate us for, uh, for the oh, Kudli and then and, we get accepted. And that's that. even a reason why we had diploma. We had mm -hmm. what, which is pretty much, our Mahat used to be three years. Ah. So two years for the Mahat, but then there was one year between which was diploma. But it Just was no. Keep, keep you busy. Yeah, it was to keep you busy. <laughs> it was the waiting year between your actual Kabul to the Jamia yeah, right. and leaving the Mahat. Oh, so it's three years. It three was three years. Was, yeah. Recently, within like the last two years or three years, I they believe, changed they up. changed it. Now it's only two years, like everyone else's. Right, right. Not just the Akhijarat al Imam. They need one year to do Ijraat for you to get accepted. Okay, you gotta start talking about my university, bro. Barakalafik. Hey, so now you're coming here. You're, uh, it's the beginning of, of the year. You went straight to Kulia. You yeah. went to which Kulia? I went to Kulia Hadith. MashaAllah. Jimmy, uh, why did you pick Kulit Hadith? I was advised, mostly, because um, this is the thing. I, I really, I was just, I, I, my, plans was, was, my plan was just to get in. Mm. So what Kulia and all of that, that was so far in the future, I didn't even yeah, think about yeah, it. Yeah. So when I got there, I was like, all right, what do I do now? So I asked the brother, what should I do? He said, go Kulit Hadith. Mm. Was he and Kulit Hadith? No, he, he had gone to Kulit Sharia. But his mm. reasoning was, uh, which was good, actually. Mm. He said, the vibe, the atmosphere in Khalid al-Hadith is, really, is, is really a student environment. Mm. Like you, you see Tulab uh, students memorizing or revising. Mm. Or like it's a competitive... Uh, yeah, uh, a bit more serious. A bit more serious. Yeah, yeah. And he said like a lot of students need that. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, sure. Go right. and, well, I, I, and to be honest, even before I was coming out, you hear about Khalid al-Hadith and it's the strongest Khalid. That's mm. for the men and all of that. And <laughs> I was like, yeah, let me go, man. I'm a man. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I did that one. And I will lie, I benefit a lot. Mm. Like, I, I, I concede that the topics, because all uh, uh, the, the major criticism is uh, you're not going to benefit from the topics. You're not really going to teach some of the subjects that you study yeah. outside. Meaning a lot of stuff is going to be for your personal benefit. But when you yes. go back, it's not going to be much you can actually give that one to. Exactly. Mm. So... Which is true in a sense, mm. but still, like, just having that environment of talab al-ilm and memorizing and studying and just getting yeah, that for yeah. four years, basically, yeah. was uh, for me, was amazing. Sahih. Um, amazing. So, so you go into Kulit Hadith. Yeah. Um, before that, before that, so your first time only out of Sweden was to Egypt. 
from four years? No, I'd been to England. I've been to. Oh, uh, okay. Like, but, but like Mecca, Medina hadn't. Uh huh. So this was your first time leaving there to study in some place else besides Egypt. Yeah, basically. Okay. And this is, was the, like I was. I think I was 22 at the time. Mm. So it was basically my first experience outside the country by myself. Mm, Jimmy. Uh, for a like extended period, like living alone. I'd been to different countries, like for visiting and family and relatives, but mm-hmm. I always had someone with me, or I yeah, was staying yeah. for one or two weeks and okay. going back. Okay, mashallah. So this is that. So like now you're on your own. I'm on my own, like mashallah. Swim, swim or, now, know. did you apply to any other university or only Jam Islamia? Only Jam Islamia. Ajib. And that was the first time you applied. Yeah. Allah. So <laughs> yeah, it, de- it got delayed, but alhamdulillah got in. Mashallah, Jamil, Jamil. Mumtaz, so what would you say are some um, things that separates Kulit Hadith? from the other kuliyat like what were some things that you really felt like because you know in the universities here yeah. all of the, the, the colleges they generally s- study somewhat similar thing yeah. cur- curriculum yeah. however there's kuliyat that make extra emphasis on that major in mm-hmm. which you're studying in. Yeah. so what would separate kulit hadith from the other ones you would say uh we had a lot of focus on hadith and hadith related issues like uh, uh we had uh, al hadith now was that every year like Jarha Ta'deel, it was basically for my second year all the way up. Mm. But you study different topics. So mm. the first topic we studied within Jarha Ta'deel was which books are relevant in this field. Mm. And then how do the scholars like grade a person mm. within the Isnad and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then how would you do it by yourself. And then the last one is the last two or three semesters is basically a topic called Takhreej. Mm. So the idea is to put into use everything you've studied and try to grade a hadith by yourself. Mm-hmm. And of course, you've got like teachers supervising and everything and just making sure you're on your way. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that, that was a good thing. Yeah, Jimmy. Now, there's a lot of people who have misconceptions around a topic like Jahra Tadi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to explain us for the viewers. Yani well, well like Jahra Tadi, it's uh, like simplistically, like easily put, it's basically uh, commenting on a person's uh, reliability in transmitting hadith. Mm. So uh, they do it by looking at two major factors, uh, his memory mm-hmm. and his what they call adala, his r- religion, like mm-hmm. how religious he is and how uh, like trustworthy, trustworthy he is, exactly, yeah. his trustworthiness. Yeah. So by, do, by, by commenting on those t- both of those issues, they mm-hmm. try to make a collected judgment on the person and mm-hmm. then grading him into different categories. So you've got thiqa, you've got maqbul, you've yeah. got saduq, you've got yeah. da'if, yeah. you've got da'if jiddan, yeah. very weak, yeah. even like, even if someone were to agree with him, it wouldn't help his case. Yeah, yeah. And so on and so forth. So it's really, it's not that complicated, but there are a lot of steps. Mm-hmm. And it's not even the only thing that goes into verifying hadith. So you've got even the chain of transmission. Mm-hmm. Is it complete? Is it cut off somewhere yeah. what's the cut off uh-huh. do you have other hadith that say the same thing that's yeah. better and like that that they together could possibly become one hadith that's yeah, authentic, yeah. authentic strengthen so it. yeah yeah strengthen it Jimmy. Jimmy. So I, I, don't, I don't think it's, it's complicated it's just that people like to use it in a wrong way I think that was makes it complicated so Not as proper bad they yeah. give they <laughs> give the jarah ta'adil a bad rap in terms of the way they implement it amongst the people so mm. they'll they'll take some of these principles completely out of context yeah and um they'll just memorize the terminology oh. and they will implement it wrongfully and also another thing as well this jarah mm. ta'adil as related to ilm al-hadith yeah. that's one thing now some scholars they'll use the same terminology when it comes to clarifying the haq and refuting people of falsehood mm-hmm. some scholars they call it jarah yeah. yeah. yes yeah. But there are other scholars, and you'll find people that are sending these, they'll send clips around. For example, they'll, they'll send a clip around from Sheikh Fawzan saying, like, there's no jarh al ta'adil yeah. in this time. It's because some mashaykh, they don't use that terminology. Yeah, For yeah. them, they call it al rad al mukhalif. It's not that they are saying that, you know, in this day and age, you can't warn against the people of innovation and you can't really uh, praise people upon the sunnah. That's not what they mean. What they mean is, jarh al ta'adil, ilm al hadith, it's got to do with ruwat al hadith, like you've mentioned. Mm. And when it comes to warning against falsehood, they call that al-rad al-mukhalif. And there are other scholars that use this same terminology yeah. for mm-hmm. warning against people innovation. So I think that's where the confusion comes from. <laughs> Just yeah. the mustalah, yeah, how it's used. Yeah, it's very, it's very nice that you make that, that separation also because they also come with different conditions, right? Mm-hmm. They have different conditions and different ways to apply them. For example, Yani, when you're doing Jaha uh, Tadir, for example, yeah. um, there are scenarios where you might narrate from someone 
who's has a mukhalif in aqida true yeah. whereas a rad al mukhalif the whole point is because that person has a mukhalif in his aqida yeah, 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 <laughs> you yeah, want yeah. to refute that issue that he's having yeah, yeah. so yeah, these yeah. There's, there's, there's separations and there's different things that differentiate the two and i think sheikh falzan he's very um he's very distinctive like yeah he's, he's very deep, smart yeah, in the yeah. way he applies things to he knows who he's talking to mm, he true. knows that these are issues he knows that you know people are mixing he so he's very particular yeah. so when he says this he's saying it to rear people away from using it in a certain yeah, way sorry. yeah you know that point that you made is really important and i remember sheikh adam also talked about it once as well mm. Um, which is you'll find people true some people will be like oh yeah what's wrong with you Salafis you know we can take from people innovation because the Salaf they narrated from Fulan bin Fulan who was a Mubtadi it's like we have to differentiate between Riwaya and Diraya no. the two different mm -hmm. things yeah. right you're not going to this Mubtadi in order to take a chain of narration from him yeah. where he's narrating from the Prophet when it comes to a person's trustworthiness then the biggest Jarah as you know is obviously Kadib you yeah. know <laughs> And so. some scholars, they, they, they accepted uh, the narration from Al-Bidah. But when you're going to sit with an innovator to seek knowledge, you're not seeking the riwayah, the narration, or the chain of narration. You're seeking the raya. You're, mm. you're seeking his understanding of the hadith Sahih. and his understanding of the Quran. Mm. So these two things can't be mixed up. Yeah. Yani don't, don't take these qawaits from Jarrah Ta'deel. And then try and, like you mentioned, implement it yeah. in a completely different bab, which has its own yeah, <laughs> intricacies yeah, and yeah. different ahwal. Yeah. Do you, I mean, is there? Do you think there's a reason why people get confused these two matters? I mean, you studied in Hakul Hadith. Did you see maybe some mix mixing between the two, or the, th the thing is, as uh, Sheikh said, uh, some people use uh, principles that it are set in a specific science of mm. the Hadith mm. and just apply it on other babs and. Mm. The thing is, I understand the confusion because it's sometimes similar. Yeah, in the way that you scenarios. do it. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So it's really easy to just copy paste. Yeah. But all the time it won't work out. Exactly. Like it won't work out all the time. Like sometimes you need like no, this is. Yeah, you'll here. hit the mark sometimes, yeah, but yeah, some sometimes it's completely yeah, yeah. off. But yeah. I understand the confusion because they're really related to each other. Because this one talks about bid'ah and mm -hmm. refuting the mubtadi and mm -hmm. all of that, and this one talks about how do we interact. With, with, that, the, yeah. with that person yeah. in the hadith field yeah. which is really closely linked to seeking knowledge yeah. so I understand the confusion but th sometimes that parallel doesn't work out yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. so um, I guess another follow up to that, to that question I want to move on but a follow up to that would yeah. be would there, was there any like the cat out there who might have tried their best to separate this like because I'm sure you have a lot of students in your classes and things who are yeah. mixing the two uh, to be honest, yeah, you have really good teachers. Mm. Uh, uh, like overall, I had a, I had a lot of good teachers. I had, alhamdulillah, I had most of the known mashayikh mm. in Kulli al Hadith mm. that were Mashallah. like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, across the board. Shahid Mahsin, was you were there when you? He's in the Hadith, sir. I think he was doing Sharia. He teaches in Sharia. Oh, Sharia. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, but I actually used to go to sometimes, sometimes his classroom classes. <laughs> Nobody noticed. It's like hundred. <laughs> Students of Allah but what are some of those mashayikh I mean for the audience that mm. might not know yeah. some of those mashayikh that would teach a kulit al-hadith that you yeah. mentioned to some names yeah. uh, so basically you've got um, uh, Muhammad Bakhit al-Hijayli Sheikh Muhammad Bakhit al-Hijayli he was recently appointed Imam at Mr. Quba yeah uh, yeah, 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 yeah Sheikh Salman was praying yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So he was a really good teacher. He taught us in Bab al Salah and Muharrar, but he had Mashallah. really good and beneficial advice as well. Mashallah. You've got uh, Sheikh uh, Saud al Sa'idi, mm. he was a really good teacher. So he really recently passed away, mm. but I had him in Makanat al Sunnah and as well. Like he really understood what was going on and how to give advice and stuff oh, like that. Okay. But the thing is, I've felt with students sometimes is, especially in Medina, like we could all hear the same lecture. But when we go out, everybody interprets it in different yeah, ways. Different ways so hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, like, I could find sometimes, like, did you hear the Sheikh? MashaAllah, he was really wadih. Uh, I, I agree, he was wadih, but what did you understand? Yeah. So, he understands something completely different to what I yeah, understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> and that's, that's an issue, basically, because sometimes people come to Medina with a certain lens on mm. and interpret so everything. Filter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So filter. So, everything the Sheikh says, Either he in, like interprets it uh, in a different way, yeah. or like he just ignores it because it really does it doesn't yeah, match yeah, it with yeah, his yeah. Uh, worldview. So, so what I noticed is sometimes people come to Medina and leave, and they haven't really been open to changing themselves. Which is, f for me, what I believe is personally is one of the most important parts of your 
طلب العلم is to be able to reevaluate a lot of your major opinions yeah. by with the guidance of the mashayikh because that's what you you hear that's, that's, that's what we came based on yeah, knowledge yeah yeah, yeah. We, we we came to get our, to learn knowledge yeah. right so if you're coming and you're coming like a closed book where i already know I already know. I'm just, I just here. Want, I just, I just want the approval, <laughs> and I just want yeah. the validation from some of the yeah. How do I do that? I listen to some of the things they say, and I leave out the rest. Yeah. So when when they're talking about, for instance, like uh, let's be honest, um, talking about like being gentle with your brothers mm. and being careful and not doing this and not doing mm. that, those things tend to fly out the window. Yeah. yeah. And then some of the other statements tend to like have a lasting impact. I've even had people in my classes who were like, or I would say my peers, people who were studying around the same years, yeah, they'll be like, "That was that is off it." Like, yeah, yeah, he's true, like, true, true, true. Yeah. Because he's, you know, he sounds like a Ikhwani. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know. Yeah. I, mean, really I mean, look, 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 look. To, to be to be fair, right? Mm. To be fair, it's not like every sheikh that teaches the university is upon the Sunnah. Of course, yeah. of course. Okay, so you'll come, you'll come to to Saudi, but the question is, these preconceived notions that you have, or this pre knowledge that you have. What is it based on? Mm. Okay, those things that are based on Quran and Sunnah and Qawaid and Manat that you've learned from the Mashayikh or from the Ulama, yeah. yes, that you know that you've either taken directly from them or from their books or the likes, not necessarily something someone translated for you, that's mm. itself is another bab. Mm. Alhamdulillah, there's no compromise there because mm. that's Quran, Sunnah, and, and Manat, right? So. But the issue is, like you've mentioned, issues with maybe worldview or issues with how to deal with people and issues. Yeah. These sort of things. Like a lot of people, they have that filter, yes? And now their job is to kind of like uh, categorize every sheikh that comes and teaches them. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, if yeah. he's speaking the same tongue as the way he has been pre-programmed, yeah. mm. then like you said, he <laughs> accepts it. Hello. If not, it completely goes out of the window, subhanAllah. And, and a lot of these people, to be honest, I don't know if you've noticed the same thing, or even you and Malik Saud, a lot of these people who had this type of view, they don't finish the dirasa. Yeah, they People ready. who come, who, and they're like a closed book. And they automatically are categorizing the teachers and negating what they already have some type of preconceived notion of mm. what they think is true by way and of And double checking some brothers, Akhi, subhanAllah, I know they would they would literally uh, they're here in Saudi. The scholars are here. Mm. And some of these contentious issues, yes, they would literally wait until the summer, until they could go back and ask their local oh, whatever yeah. Ustad. Yeah. When when he could have gone to Darul Ifta down the road and ask Sheikh Fawzan or whatever. Yeah. And he doesn't. He Actually, waits to go back to the summer to go in uh, and visit and sit with the brothers to find out. You know, it's crazy, yeah. Akhi, but Yeah, so so I guess we could take from that just to make sure that you're checking that what you're learning well, with the scholars, you yeah, know, true. with the scholars. You know, Especially that could be the... Here, yeah. If you're here, if you're here in Saudi Arabia, you're studying in the jam, or whatever the case may be, Hamdan is on the mat all around that you can go and check even in, either in Qism or somewhere close around. I remember we had Sheikh Al-Hidan, who was Allah. very close, you know, to, he lived very close to the Jamia. Oh, so he'd have lessons once or twice a week. You know, oh. we have an issue, you could just go right to him. Yeah. And he even had translated lessons as well. Allah so Allah. yeah, there was a brother translating the, the lesson into English. So you can even put a question up in English okay. and get it translated as, there was, there was no excuse. Well, like, no, no excuse. <laughs> if, I, if, I were, if I were to say to you, I'm the same person, then when I came, that would be, that, that'll be a lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, but <laughs> wallahi, the way I saw things and some of the understandings that I had when I initially came and now is like I'm completely two different people. Yeah, I, I, think like, we, I think we all go through that. And that's, yeah, it's like how? Yeah, it's, it's supposed right? to be like that. I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. supposed to, like I've been here for about eight years now. Uh, yeah, 2014. Years. Mashallah. So I'm supposed to have been shaped by my experiences here, by mm. my interaction with the mashayikh, yeah. with the knowledge. I'm supposed to have grown as a person. Sahih. Supposed to have really evaluated some of my positions. From, like, grown as a yeah. person. Yeah, yeah. If I yeah. go back to Sweden and I'm still the same person I was 2000 back, why, <laughs> that's why a problem. That be, that's a big problem. A big, big time, <laughs> 100%. Big some people actually try to use that. Um, yeah, he's changed. As yeah, a bad yeah, yeah. issue. Yeah, I'll say he changed. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I came here to change. I remember, yeah. I remember before I used to think like... <laughs> Did I change? No, I did. I did. Then I'm like, wait, <laughs> ain't it supposed to change? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah. So, alhamdulillah. Now, going on to um, Magister. Yeah. So, you didn't do Magister in Hadith, right? No. You did your Magister in Aqidah. Aqidah. Mumtaz, yes. tell us about that. Yeah, so um, the thing is, I wanted to like change, change the scenery, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, doing Hadith for four years, it's intense. Uh, and I wanted to have, because one of the, good things about kulia is you have teachers even masters 
you have teachers that are specialized in the field so you get to t- like be taught by them mm-hmm. and then i wanted that but i wanted it in aqeed in a new field yeah so yeah. spend some time with them and like see what they can offer because yeah. mm-hmm. all of us know like the basics in every field mm-hmm. as a talib al-ilm you should be like well versed in a lot of the yeah yeah, yeah but after that you do tahassus you like you specialize in a field and you, you're trying to master, master that, that yeah. yeah and going to aqeedah i felt like all right you've got like professors like usatida the captain and stuff like that that are really specialized have written really a lot of books and a lot of thesis papers and a lot of like in journals and everything yeah They're really yeah, yeah. up to date with the ladies and all of that yeah, yeah. so i want that yeah so i and 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 you can't really move around too much in the jamia so mm. i couldn't like iqra'at for instance was like even if i knew the qiraat it was not an option for me yeah, yeah. Uh, and the fiqh as well so i was like all right let me go aqida because as well as aqida is the most important thing mm. so 100%. yeah yeah so i was like let me go there and check it out so i applied i got in at 2000 i think 18 mm. yeah i got in 2018 and i started my studies and i did a what what, what they call masar so i had a special uh, lane mm-hmm. where, where we focused more on fiqh mm-hmm. and i chose that one even then i was thinking about all right i want to be in sect by the way yeah, for those yeah. yeah sorry mm-hmm. yeah so I, i chose that lane as well because that lane was a bit different than the regular lane the regular mm-hmm. lane is you do one year with the teachers and manhajia like mm-hmm. you've got classes and then two years i think or uh, the rest of it basically mm-hmm. you do a, a master's mm-hmm. thesis yeah, no. yeah. uh fiqh like my lane was two years with the teachers so you got, you've got two years of classes and then you the rest of the time you do the uh, uh, the thesis resala, yeah the resala, and then and that one is not as it's not supposed to be as big as the other one yeah, so yeah. i did a smaller one I did, yeah, it's called yeah. takmila uh, do you have it in english uh well i'm not sure how yeah, to translate <laughs> but yeah so but we've explained this on the podcast many times the difference between takmili yeah. and doing risala so, so the takmili uh, for me since i had never done a risala like from beginning to end yeah i felt like all right this is a less of a challenge and this is a better experience i think that'll be better for all to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to true, be honest true, true. like yeah. don't get me wrong i mean i'm doing a risala right now yeah. it's okay alhamdulillah yeah. but the thing about takmili you're more guided you're more along the way you're true. guided by your your teachers and you're you know being helped along the way and it's not as big it's not as big so i had i could like get away with about 200 pages <laughs> which is Allah. nice yeah. and then uh It's a good experience because if you want to continue writing risalas, uh, theses, then you like it's a sort of like a, tra- a boot camp, a training yeah, camp. Yeah. You're working, you're doing, you're, <laughs> you're trying on everything, but in a small yeah, size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get you get to feel qu- confident. You get to feel like, all right, I've tried this. I can go on to bigger things. Mashallah. But the difference between master's thesis and PhD is not. It's basically the same. To be yeah, honest. I think it's the same. Now, mm-hmm. how, now, how did you? see the difference between going from bachelor's to magister even though it was different you know to khassus different it major it was a huge difference yeah. um yeah we all agree on that yeah it's a huge 100%. difference man major eye opener <laughs> so what were some of them differences what are some of them big things that you were like wow this was cuz uh, me personally i feel like my studies didn't really study until i got into magister i do well, i agree i felt like it was like this is why i came you get what i'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah, yeah. so what what are some differences did you see first of all um the time with the teachers as well Yes. Cuz the classes are obviously smaller. Like from we could be in Kuwait Hadith 30 students. In the beginning we were 50 70. In magister. In no Oh in no, no, no bachelor's. Yeah, okay. Yeah, bachelor's. yeah. So in masters you got 10 students. Yeah, yeah, and so some of them are dropping off. So at the end we were just like 5 or 7. Allahu akbar. Yeah, so it's not that much. So you get a l- like you get a lot of time with the teacher. Uh-huh. Uh but the expectations are quite higher. Uh-huh. So uh I remember like tell me about it uh when when we came like the first class the, the teacher teaches us obviously but s- he says all right uh, you're required to do buhuth uh, like uh, essays yeah so he sort of like says everyone takes a topic and uh, just hand it in in two weeks mm. bro those two weeks were murders <laughs> to be honest like <laughs> seriously because that that teacher did that and like the next class it was the same handed it in two or three weeks yeah yeah, yeah the, the thing is every teacher teaches you as if he's the only guy yeah, teaching true, you yeah, yeah. when you have another six objects <laughs> yeah yeah so like i'm done with the first week and i've got about five or six essays to write and all of them to be handed in within the next two or three weeks Allah Akbar. uh so i was like how, how am i gonna do that? yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i had a like I had a schedule I go to the rules I have this I have that I go train all of that like stop yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, I had one teacher اخي سبحان الله he said uh, 
it meant to summarize a book. Oh, yeah. said, summarize a book. So he told, I mean, he gave me, I mean, I don't even know why. Other students had like, no, three volume books. Yeah. He gave me a Durr al Masoon, yes, yeah, by Samin al Halabi, which like 14 volumes. <laughs> and then he's not like, just summarize it. And he's like, Iqra'ha qira'a fahisa. Like, oh, read yeah. the whole book, like, uh, you know. <laughs> I don't know, that's impossible, mate. I can't, yeah, yeah. I can't do that in a year, let alone. <laughs> and, and, and it's not like any book. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a, a book, grammar Arab, book, Arab, you know, yeah, it's yeah, like Arab. Arab. Yeah. And, and, and that's not the only one. After that one, that's like the first assignment. The second assignment, oh, now you need to read the, another book, Tawjih al Qiraat by Al Azhari, which is another five volumes. It's like, you want me to write, you want me to read 20 volumes in one fasal? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. It's like, it's, it's crazy, yeah, yeah. subhanAllah. Some, some teachers, yeah, you, so, you have so. to live with it. Now, um, who were some of like the <coughs> Not that I did, by the way, not that I did. I didn't read the whole thing, by the way. Huh? <laughs> I thought the muqaddimah, that was enough, right. enough information there. Right. Well, okay. <laughs> who were some of your main teachers in Jamaica? So, in I Bajasir? had uh, basically Sheikh Salah Sahibi. MashaAllah. He taught in uh, Dirasat al Uliya. Yeah, he taught Mashallah. me masters. He taught me for a whole year, basically. What subject? Uh, he taught me in uh, Al Iman. Mabahat al Iman. Yeah. So, uh, issues regarding Iman, it goes up, it goes down, mm. the definition of Iman, <coughs> and all of that. Mm. And then uh, we did uh, Asma' wa Sifat with him as well. MashaAllah. Tawheed al Asma' wa Sifat. And then we had uh, Sheikh Sara Sindhi as well. MashaAllah. For uh, Mashallah. about a year as well. I see, I see now why you went to Aqidah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did he teach? He taught us Jadal actually. MashaAllah. Uh, and he taught us uh, Mantiq. And he taught us as well Maqala uh, Ta'atir. So all of them, all the groups and sects that negate Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's attributes. Now, did you guys do Naqt al Mantiq? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, did, we studied the Mantiq and then we studied the Naqt al Mantiq. Exactly. And the Fawai, yeah, yeah. Was yeah, yeah, it's the same as yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. We do uh, Mantiq in the Kulia, but then you don't really do the Naqt until you get into Magistrate. Really? Yeah, you went really in depth with one of the I teachers. Um, so yeah, that's the difference, I guess, between us. What else? Who else did you have? I had. Uh, what else did I have, man? I had uh, Sheikh Ahmed Al Ghunayman, mm. son of Sheikh Abdullah Al Ghunayman. Uh-huh. He was very beneficial as well. He did. Uh, he had an interesting uh, way of teaching, actually, because he wanted to teach us as, we, like he says, you guys are master students, so you, ha- I'm not, g- I have to pre- prepare the class as well, but you have to prepare as well, so you have to come prepared. You have to have read like all of the things that the, the topics that we're going to cover yeah and then he would ask us and ask us to discuss and ask us to refute one another like he did yeah, that yeah, yeah. he did that type of teaching yeah, yeah so it was really interesting and beneficial as well uh who else did i have man let me see uh i had uh sheikh suleiman al suhaimi mm. he was he's a well-known figure in uh yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a well-known figure in Kulita Dawah. Masha, what, did he, what did he teach he taught us uh he taught us uh shia as well as he taught us uh, Yehudi or Nasraniya, so the mashallah. Christianity and uh, Judaism. Yeah, mashallah. Uh, so we had those topics, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So your your thesis, what was your topic? Uh, my thesis was on a person of uh, the Christian religion called uh, John Damascene. Mm. So he lived about, like, he lived in the Dawl uh, al-Ummawiyya, the Ummiyya dynasty. And he lived up around 173 Hijri, about that time. Mm. It's really difficult to tie it down because they really weren't big on Tariq at the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, he has some issue. He has some opinions. He has a book called uh, "The Feed Orthodox in Latin." He wrote mm-hmm. it in Greek, and he has some opinions that are really similar to some of the Firaq mm. as uh, regarding Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's names and attributes, Ta'atil Sifat, negating them. He has a lot, he's a Qadri, in, in when it comes to Qadr, he denies the Qadr, obviously. Mm. And like, his way of reasoning as well. So it's not really just like, they have the same opinions, but mm. they go at it from different, uh, they go at it from different uh, aspects. Mm. No, because the reasoning, reasoning is also the same. So basically, when he discusses uh, sometimes some of the texts, some of the verses from the Bible, mm-hmm. he makes what, what we call ta'wil, he changes the meaning and says yeah, this really yeah. means that and this really means that like it's almost as if you're reading these groups books as well like they do the same thing uh-huh, uh-huh, so okay. yeah so i did a comparison study and like where i did i i write his opinions first and i and i write the mu'tazila's opinions after that because uh-huh. my my i focused it on mu'tazila because my my supervisor told me like you can't take the whole everything yeah, yeah so yeah. you have to like be narrow you have to narrow it down yeah yeah 
So yeah, so I did that. Uh, was there anything else written on him whatsoever? Or not in my field. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They had writ- He has been mentioned in a lot of books, mm-hmm. but he, there's no specific study on him. Mm-hmm. So that that's why I was able to. Mm-hmm. And uh, there has been some issues with his uh, what do you call it? With his uh, apologist stance against the Muslim, because he has another book called. Uh, Al-Hartaqat, the heretics, mm, mm-hmm. and he mentions uh, Islam as a like the Muslims as ha- uh-huh. the last one. Okay. So he really de- debates them and discusses with them and so on and so forth. So some studies have been done on that part, but yeah, yeah. his opinions and his ta'til and all of that, and yeah. it's not been studied. How was the uh, munakasha? How was it? Bro, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. It's an interesting experience. You did it online, or you did it? No, in, I did it in, in person. In, yeah, I did it in person. So um, it's interesting because there's a custom. Regarding the munakasha, yeah. you're not allowed to do this. You, you're supposed to do that. Munakasha, let's translate it for the people. Yeah, listening. The, the, it's the, the defending of your thesis. thesis yeah, yeah. Right. So you're not really supposed to defend. I've, I, I gathered that after the defending, yeah, like yeah. you know, you're just supposed you, you, to sit there and just take Zakala it. Khair, Zakala khair, Zakala khair, Zakala khair, Zakala <laughs> I'll take this under advisement. I'll really, I really appreciate opinions. I really yeah, appreciate yeah. and all of that. So yeah, because sometimes I used to go to them a lot, but it's and you learn some stuff. Mm-hmm. So you learn, all right, don't do this on your, don't do that on your. Mm-hmm. Uh, but sitting in it, you really see it from another perspective. Because sometimes you hear the criticism and you feel like, oh, man, that's a big mistake. And uh, I really, I, I'm, I'm shocked at how the student could make that mistake. But sitting there and seeing that the student is not really allowed to defend himself, mm. you see that, all right, he's probably has some good reasoning for it, but he's not allowed to say it. Yeah, he's just supposed yeah. to take it and leave. You right. know? It's like even looked at like... <clears throat> Almost like a like a aib, yani. If you yeah, send it, yeah, you're going yeah, back yeah. and forth. It's for just the a right like, passage. Just yeah. do it and take the comments and like keep it moving. Keep it moving, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like it shows also when when it comes to the degree, because uh, everyone passes and then mm-hmm. different like degrees grade, grading, but you still get a passing grade. So it's mm. not. So if you still get a passing grade at the end of the day, it must have not that been that big of a mistake. Yeah, to be yeah. So are you but, saying? But I think it's different. Uh. Different universities, I think, have different environments uh-huh. True. Uh, I think so, some of the <coughs> universities are maybe more like you know just yes okay yeah, sheikh. Yeah. Mm. in our university I've attended a few of these munakashat and mm-hmm. there is quite some back and forth at times really yeah <coughs> have, you, have you ever watched the uh, munakashat with Sheikh Mokbil <laughs> oh yeah like, that, I mean that's that was kind of a different situation, though. <laughs> Which one? Uh, Sheikh Mugba, when he was defending his magister. In Medina? Yeah, Medina. Is he, that recorded? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's for the, it the audio out there, yeah. It wasn't... Um, Aslan, there was some. There was something there between yeah, the yeah, two. Yeah, 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 there was a bit of... You know, I so, read about it. Yeah, yeah so he was uh, the one giving the um, defending, or I'm sorry, the critique on Sheikh mm. Mugbil. We're like taking like... Shots. <laughs> I guess you could say that, for lack of better words. Taking uh, some shots, taking some jabs. And then Sheikh Mopo just was jabbing back pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I read about it afterwards. There was a bit of animosity. He's, he even talks about it in his, uh, some of his Asher. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, subhanAllah. So, once you finish that, that was when, the beginning of this year? Yeah, exactly in February. Yeah, February, 6th of February. MashaAllah. So, yeah. now you're applying for a PhD. Inshallah, inshallah. Jam Islamia. Yeah. Now, applying for the PhD... You guys have to take a test, right? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The admission, uh, the admission t- test, uh, or what do they call it? اختبار شامل. Yeah, no, no. The اختبار شامل comes afterwards. Oh. So you have to take a test oh, to be two even, exams. Yeah, yeah. So you have to pay, take a test to be even admitted into the qism. Yeah. Uh, the, the the program, and yeah, you get like you you have to get a passing grade, and then afterwards it's mufadala. So they have to see the who has the, the highest. highest uh, yeah, who has the highest and who wow. has the lowest and stuff like. That. But it's different because uh, I don't know how you guys do it here in Jihad. But for the masters, there's a lot of competition because a lot of students uh, are actually, playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're re- leaving Kulia mm-hmm. and they're going to the masters. So there's a like you've got you competing with the whole Jama. Basically. Yeah, we had a 200 and something people apply yeah. for for Aqida, right? Yeah, you see, but uh, of those, you get like 15 or 20. Like let's say 10 even. Mm. Those 10 are the ones you're going to be competing with for the PhD because the other ones are not really qualified uh-huh, anymore. Uh-huh. So the competition is less. Yeah, so it's yeah. a bit easier. But you guys also get competition from outside of Jamsamir, yeah, right? uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's is that true. usually a lot or no? No, not that much. Okay. Are you applying to other universities as well? Jamsamir, Timah, Mojama, Medicare? We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> <man>. <laughs>
see, inshallah. Inshallah. Allah, you will fix it, Akhi. Allah, Allah, fix. So, what are some advice is um, that you would give to new students who are coming in who want to try to go upon the same path, seeking knowledge in the kulli and going to higher studies? Well, to be honest, the first thing I would say is um, uh, enjoy the experience. To be honest, uh, yeah. like because um, inshallah, you're gonna learn. Like, if you you've come here, if you're studying. You're gonna come out with something, inshallah, bi Allah Azza wa Jal. And this knowledge is a form of rizq. It's a form of like sustenance from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Mm. Allah gives it to whom He wills, and uh, as the dua says, "Rabbi zidni ilma," or Allah increases mm. me knowledge. So it's a form of rizq, as Imam Al Bukhari also mentioned. Mm. Uh, but a lot of people are really stressed when they come because they feel like mm. I have to take in all this knowledge, and they get really stressed. And this Fulan has memorized this, and Fulan has memorized that, and I have to catch up, and so mm. on and so forth. And they forget to in just enjoy the the time in like even in Riyadh or Medina, mm. especially in Medina, because uh, you don't know how many years you have in the country uh, or in the that land, the blessed Sahih. land. Sahih. Be, uh, being able to just uh, over a week and just decide I want to go Umrah and just yeah, going there yeah, and then yeah, coming yeah. back or just going to pray in Masjid al-Nabawi okay, that's a blessing man yeah like I, I remember when I used to be in Medina uh, I was only there for one semester Mashallah. but every time I needed a haircut I went to make Umrah SubhanAllah. Yeah. I never got my haircut in Medina <laughs> yeah. if I needed a haircut I was like Khalas it's time for Umrah yeah. and I would just travel hair's getting too long but yeah, yeah my hair's yeah, getting too long Khalas I'm going this weekend yeah, you, you, go, see, you yeah. can sometimes you can do it the same day yeah, you, you I won't get back. a hotel I will take a ta taxi go down with my ihram go on, come, come back, back then I would yeah, yeah, yeah. even with clean. the new trains it's oh, yeah, literally it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's game expensive. changer it's expensive yeah, though, it's right? expensive. yeah it's true. it's like the same as a flight I think no it's a bit cheaper than a no, flight no, it's cheaper. a little and cheaper but not much it brings you to Mecca as well it doesn't bring you to Jeddah oh that's nice so it, like I think they're actually expanding it so you should be able to be like really close to the Haram as well I, they haven't done it real yet but that's the plan, I think. Uh, right now, it's kind of far from the Haram. Yeah, yeah, but uh -huh. it's a taxi, like 20 hours. Okay, that. so it's One fine. Test. So you could literally, like, take the 7 a.m. train or the 9 a.m. train mm -hmm. and then come back at night. That's you could beautiful. come back at 7. You Actually, could I would take the train over. Bro. Them, ta yeah, them taxis are to, dangerous. Yeah. No, you, got no, you two can hours. read inside the train. Yeah, you yeah. can relax. Advise, you can do work. Yeah, it looks got, comfortable. Mashallah. You've got a canteen. You've got, like, a little shop. You can buy yeah, some yeah, coffee and stuff like that. It's amazing. And obviously, it doesn't stop. No, it stops in Jeddah, and some of them stops stop in Jeddah airport. Uh, so you've got two stops. Okay. So if it's, this. Yeah, yeah, because if it stops in Jeddah only, then it's two hours. If it mm. stops in Jeddah and Jeddah airport, it's two hours, 20 minutes. So it's okay. really not uh, that long. Yeah, straight. So yeah, but enjoy the pro uh, enjoy the time, like do ibadah, uh, like work on yourself yeah. and enjoy it like, because as I said, a lot of people are stressed and they like do this and do that. And they don't really take the time to reflect. I'm in Medina. And, yeah, like, I'm in a yeah, I'm in a ni'mah and <laughs> I'm having fun and I'm, learning and I, th I think it goes things. back to as well the what's what what's knowledge anyway defining what True. knowledge is mm. i mean knowledge is not that you go there and you go back with all this information and you somehow don't forget it and and you have all these for i suppose True. Th uh, the student's intention should be when it comes to seeking knowledge especially under the scholars that you change you transform mm. sure. you become a different person mm -hmm. and is amal yeah. you know maybe before you left your country, the UK or whatever, maybe you're struggling with praying salah in jama'ah, maybe so. you were struggling with uh, reading the Quran regularly, maybe you're struggling with having khushu' in your salah, so. maybe you're struggling with making dua regularly, waking, waking up for qiyam al-layl. Yani, it's about you going back and now you're a different person. Now, so. now you pray in jama'ah, you do your qiyam al-layl, you have khushu', you're more connected to your Lord, you understand your ibadah. But subhanAllah is a calamity, akhi, that we see sometimes a lot of students, Allah musta'an, they leave their countries, they go to study for four years and they don't go back and they're still the same person. Yeah. They still don't come jama'ah. Oh, they're still, uh, are, their akhlaq is still as bad as before they left, mm. you know? I mean, you see some people, Allah Mustan, even get worse. Get worse, get subhanAllah. Worse. Not More not arrogant. Not yeah. and because now they have the knowledge as a weapon, basically. Yeah, La ilaha yeah. Allah. Allah Mustan. Allah Mustan. Um, so, I didn't even ask you, but throughout your studies, did you, you get married or you... I got married before, so I, it's a funny story, actually. Uh, I was putting off because I wasn't getting accepted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm not getting accepted right now. Uh, things are not working out. Let me just get married. So you started off serious, like, khalas, I'm not getting married. Yeah. And then, then after I was some like, time, you're like, I have to get right. married. Right now. <laughs> but <laughs> the beautiful Allah. thing is, um, like, a week after I got married, I got accepted. Allahu Akbar. So it was beautiful really thing. That's a fitna. <laughs> no, man. It's, because sometimes you feel like uh, marriage is going to hinder you from yeah, certain yeah. things in your life. Yeah, That's yeah. a big misconception. But it might be the source of your risk as well. Exactly. And exactly. then like that, Kay, uh, like, that really showed like, 
the two are not really connected because yeah. I got it might have been as well as a barakah from the uh, from the marriage that mm. I, I got accepted as well. Yeah. I, I can't tell. But yeah, 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 yeah. So that's 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 Jamia. So did your wife end up coming with you? Yeah, study? the year after because uh, uh, they like. You know, Jamal Islamia, yeah. you know, the, 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 there's Some always some issues process. about that. Like, mm. But alhamdulillah, the year I came, they brought out a new system. Because mm. what, what, what is Jamal Islamia? We were talking about, I think, yesterday. Uh, they have this collective punishment thing. So, oh. yeah, yeah, they uh, do. And it's really prevalent <laughs> in the whole kingdom. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> what they do is they come up with a system. Mm. And then they see that the system's not working and some of the students are misbehaving. Mm. So what they do is, all right, we're going to re- revise the whole thing. And we're gonna make it harder so that nobody misbehaves. Yeah. So one or two students messes up for everyone. Yeah. yeah. So they had a system where basically you, do, you didn't have to pay any deposit. You, you could just like you literally you could come today, make the paperwork, and like next week or the week after your wife and your family comes. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then they saw that all right, some students really bring their families and they don't have the uh, financial yeah, means for they don't it. Have the ability to they take don't care have of them. Uh, anything set up. They don't mm-hmm. have a uh, like a house or an apartment, anything. Sorry. Like nothing's ready. They just bring their wives and they have no plans. So, so what they did was they stopped that pro- process and then they said, all right, let me, let's make it, bring forth a new system. Mm-hmm. So the new system was, all right, now you have to pay a deposit and now you have to show, show a contract for an apartment. And mm-hmm. it wasn't really difficult, to be honest. Mm-hmm. So, But it just took time. And yeah. So the deposit is for, I think, because some students would come instead of paying for their family's ticket, they would just go back to the countries, mm-hmm. and then the family would go to the authorities or the university. Yeah, university yeah, basically. Like, you know, my husband left me behind, and now the dole has to kind of like put them on a plane. Really? Yeah, yeah, people true. were doing that? Yeah, yeah some people true. did that. Oh, no, so no, that's no. why the deposits, like, if you play games like that. Uh-huh. And it's even you to know? show that you're able financially, because if you can cough up money, yeah. then that means you're able financially yeah. to provide for your family. Yeah. Uh-huh, and some yeah. students weren't really able, so yeah. it really put them off. Yeah. Yeah. And then some students brought their families, mm. But you could see that the grades started slipping because okay. now they're not really in class. Yeah. He's bringing, like he's going out with his family or he's taking dot at school, mm. skipping classes and all Getting of that. Getting busy. Yeah, Getting busy, over yeah. Over the Talib, yeah. So what they did was, all right, they said, all right, you have to bring money. You have to show us that you already have an apartment in place and we have to see your grades. If it's below J. Jiddan, you're not, you're not getting your family here. Uh-huh. So it was doable, but it just lengthened the process the deposit was how much yeah i think it was ten thousand real okay so like three thousand dollars yeah almost. so and you get that back once you graduate once right? you graduate uh-huh. or even once the family leaves oh once so the, even once they go on you, yeah uh-huh. so basically when they leave even if you're planning to stay further it doesn't really matter mm. uh so they did that and i was able to bring my family a year after uh, and then afterwards they saw that some students were misbehaving even with that system so wow. they made it even harder so yeah like the, the corporate punishment thing is really big and what about now mm-hmm. if, if, if some people are watching this because we have a lot of people who are trying to apply and trying to go study what's the process right now is there is there a process there is a process the new I, I'm, I, I haven't really kept up to date but from what I've heard from some of the students is you have to be in Kulia now Okay. So you can't really be in Mahad. You can't be re- the Arabic learning stage. You yeah. can't be there. You have Which to go. Which will be two years. Yeah, you, you have to wait two years, and the amount has increased as well. Mm. And then the grades is still the same. J. Jidda. Okay. Okay. So they just made it a little bit more strict. Yeah. True. And put that that duration on it. Ah. Okay. Montez. Montez. So um, now going into uh, we had a few questions um, from actually some of them from emails, some of them from comments, some of them from Patreon. Uh, the first question that I want to put forth, and I'm going to give this to Muhammad first, is the question regarding um, better note-taking. Let me go ahead and pull it up, actually. Where was it? Anyway, the person says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I recently attended the Dora in Medina. I was able to understand the sheikh, but was un- not able to write quick notes, or n- write notes quick enough. How do I improve my handwriting speed and the way it looks? Also, a side question. How do you know what to take down from the sheikh? I mean, when a sheikh is explaining the book, do you just write down random benefits you hear at each point, or is there a method to note taking? Jazakumullah um, khairan. Regarding the first part, which is uh, he's not able to write notes quick enough, mm. and how they can improve their handwriting speed. Mm. Yani practice makes perfect, yeah. You just have to. Write more and more. The more you write, inshallah ta'ala, the quicker you'll get at writing it. So uh, that's something that it's it's one of those 
what we call forgotten skills when it comes to learning Arabic. I think I've mentioned that before, no? Yeah, well, I think we talked about this topic, generally yeah, speaking, yeah. about so, re- taking notes and things like that. Yeah, so th- there are some forgotten skills. People, they learn Arabic all the time. And they say that Arabic is uh, has four skills on any language, really. Uh, speaking, listening, reading, writing. So. And, and people, when they talk about these four skills, most of the time they only talk about the higher levels of these skills there are lower levels that people overlook for example when it comes to uh, reading mm. when people say hey you have to improve your reading they're actually talking about reading comprehension like that you open a book and you understand what's written there but before you get to reading comprehension question is can you actually recognize the letters and read fluently mm-hmm. that's what's forgotten when it comes to writing for example they're actually talking about writing sentences that are understandable but the question is before you get to writing can you know how to write the letters do you know how to type quickly enough same thing when it comes to speaking. Mm-hmm. Uh, before, it co- before we come to uh, actually um, speaking to people, making sure that your sentences are correct in terms of expression, can you actually pronounce the sounds? Yani? Yani is your qaf and the kaf the same? Because people are not going to understand you. If you say, min kalbi, they'll be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So the question is, can you, can you pronounce the sounds actually? Yeah. And same thing, the final one, which is when it comes to listening. Mm. They talk about listening. When you listen to a dars and you understand what the sheikh is saying, question is are you recognizing the sounds mm-hmm. and when the sheikh says qaf or kaf or hamz or ain are you hearing the correct uh, if you like harf mm-hmm. like, like that famous story يعني, do you know mubtada and, and khabar yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said la arif al-mubtada like arif al because ain and hamza to him mubtada yeah, yeah, mubtada yeah, sounds the same yeah. so the question is these things which I call the forgotten skills mm-hmm. handwriting is one of those mm-hmm. and rarely will you find someone who teaches you Arabic we actually focus on handwriting. And I think it has to do with what we call the curse of knowledge. Mm. Because this person teaching you at the university level, mm. <laughs> that's another issue, True. which is mm. you're coming as someone from the West to learn in a foreign language at the university level. Mm. All these dakatira, they're looking at you as someone at you. They're not looking at you as someone who just started writing Arabic last month, which, yeah. which is the case for a lot of the students. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so uh, that's why, because of the curse of knowledge, the Dakatir are not seeing your need for this. They think that it's something so badi, so easy, you should know it. Mm. Nobody focuses on handwriting. Mm. You know, they expect you to write mm. your assignments in Arabic. So, handwriting and all the other skills that I've mentioned, how do they come about? Practice. Mm. Can, can you write quickly in English? Probably yes. <laughs> why? Because you've been doing it since primary school. Sure. So, same thing with Arabic. You just have to write more and more and more and more, inshallah. What are some practical ways we, w- we could say to the, the listener on how to practice? Well, you can copy out a book, mm. definitely. Uh, just, just the fact that you're attending the durus True. and taking notes and not just sitting there passively listening to the mm. sheikh, that is practice in of itself. Yeah. Okay? If you do that long enough, it will get better. So, just keep on doing what you're doing. Never be like, okay, well, I'm not going to att- attend the dars until I'm good at writing that. You actually attending and attempting to handwrite, you'll get better. I mean, my handwriting was absolutely horrendous before I got here. Not that it's much better now, but <laughs> at least I'm writing a bit quicker. So, I'm <laughs> writing quicker now. Yeah. Why? Because you go to the Druze, you yeah. keep on writing. Yeah. So, so, it'll get better over time, inshallah ta'ala. I remember a brother used to recommend, he was um, taking notes from the Mashaikh. And yeah. somebody, and you know, you take a notes from the Mashaikh, it'll be very quickly. Mm. And obviously, you have some, uh, yeah. some practice in that. Um, he would say, go on YouTube. Listen to a scholar, say like five minutes, for example, just right, yeah, right, right, right. Afterwards, go back and check. Yeah. You know, this will get help. Get Especially it if it's speak. transcribed. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's some of the dudes are transcribed, so that way you don't have to listen again. You can quickly just True. check your handwriting against that which is trans- transcribed. You can easily uh, compare it. Regarding the way it looks, who cares the way it looks? <laughs> you know, as, as long, long as it's legible, mm-hmm. you can yeah. read it. I've read a funny, funny story on somebody's status, I think uh, it was, uh, about one sheikh who, uh, from from long time ago, from the before, the Qudama, mm-hmm. he he went to the souq, yes, and he found this manuscript, I think, and he bought it, he bought it for a lot of money, and then he came home, and this manuscript, the handwriting was really, really bad. Okay. So I think uh, it's why, for someone asked him, I can't remember the exact details, but he got basically asked, why did you spend so much money on this? He's like, because this handwriting is worse than mine. <laughs> it's like, the <laughs> <laughs> only thing I could find. Oh, yes? Man. Is that, this is, and then, subhanAllah, turns out, he goes through it, goes through it, and it then is. he finds out it's his. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> he's like, oh, so the point is, uh, the way it looks, 
it's nice if your handwriting looks good it's nice and, but but the real objective is that it's is legible mm. especially that you can read it but yeah. obviously if you're taking notes and then after this you don't know what you've read what you've written down and that's a mushkil of course what about you Akhi, Abu Abdullah? yeah would you? i would uh, agree with uh, everything that's been said and i would also say don't be scared to go back to the lesson that you like the dora and like complete like fill out the blanks Mm. Oh, but that never happens though yeah but don't be like it's because some, yeah. someone would feel like oh that's tedious man i've already listened yeah but that's like rasul al-ilm that's how uh, the knowledge uh, gets uh, uh mm. stuck in, into the mind because mm-hmm. um a lot of people really like i think one thing that's bad with myself first of all foremost but uh, generally students we go to the class we listen to the, uh, the dars and then we close the book and then we go home and it's, it's just sitting there yeah no revising yeah. the class no yeah. revising no repetition no nothing and yeah. that's a uh, th- until uh, i've noticed until you're supposed to do a dars on the same thing yeah. and then you just dust it off and like oh, <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's the thing yeah. teaching is the best <laughs> yeah. so it's the best but this might be your form of revising until you get to that stage of teaching and stuff like that Sahih. and you're working on your handwriting as well no, no that's a, that's a good point now i mean to be honest mm. i had the same outlook initially when i came to saudi right which was which is take the notes mm. and whatever you know just put like some kind of marker i didn't get this oh, well go, back go back to the lesson yeah. and check it. The lesson, check it but there were there were some challenges number one sometimes the recordings will be put out late mm-hmm. yeah. sometimes you want to record your own phone that itself is a distraction sometimes mm-hmm. your battery is low mm-hmm. uh, especially sheikh saleh fuzan's drus the death sometimes would come out two or three days later and by that time yeah, 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 already. Yeah, yeah. so but so that that was a major struggle and also and this is the biggest problem which is unless you go and listen to the whole lecture you can't just scroll and find the place within the audio mm-hmm. of where the blanks are so that literally sure. means go and listen to the whole lecture again sure. which like you said is rusukh al-ilm we're meant to do that so mm-hmm. but reality is i never got to do that mm-hmm. yeah. so until i found actually <coughs> this is really beneficial until i found uh, uh, you know i'm a tech guy this, yeah. this, this beautiful <laughs> pen it's called live scribe all right wow. what this pen does is actually i bought it i remember it um, it records the lesson it of course got a microphone in it depends on the microphone in yeah. it and it comes with this special book okay so you basically um write on this special book mm. yes while uh, uh, the sheikh is speaking and it sort of records your handwriting and it records the audio at the same time and it connects the two what do i mean by that what i mean by that is at the end of the class you literally take the pen and you point at your handwriting and it plays the sheikh's speech at oh, that point interesting yeah so you can literally just go back to whatever you put a note you go yeah. there you point the pen at it and the speaker in the pen plays what the sheikh was saying when you were writing this down oh nice man so that that was that that, that that's that a good thing as well is everybody it, should get that is it accurate yeah extremely accurate Mashallah. yeah because yeah, he has the, the special book he has like um some kind of it's a very special book he has like a lot of dots in it mm. okay. so it kind of like the pen and the pen's got like a small camera inside uh, it kind of notices the yeah. movements yeah 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 well. it logs your movements on the like paper time, yeah. and it connects that to the audio that is being mm-hmm. said yeah. within that sitting it doesn't matter if it's a recording from a, a radio or if it's uh live it doesn't matter it just records whatever is happening in that environment mm-hmm. and it connects it yeah so that really mm-hmm. helps saved yeah, me a lot yeah, of time yeah, yeah. Uh, dealing with the um the issue that we were just talking about how we don't really go back and check it and review it i remember one student who was uh obviously much better than me um he used to spend one day out of the week mm. on the weekend whether it be friday saturday whatever the case may be reviewing everything he took that week Mashallah. he wrote down even in the kulia he was reviewing Mashallah. uh so he would advise with that um i didn't get a chance to follow through with it but yeah. it might be beneficial for those listening and mm. i think it is important to go back and and me personally i would say he's from the best of the graduates of Jam- 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 yeah he's a brother uh, from the uk now the second part of this uh we didn't talk about also a side question how do you know what to take down from the sheikh i mean when a sheikh is explaining a book do you just write random benefits you hear at each point or is there a method for this type of note taking huh what would you guys say and I, and I think that's a, it's a, it's a relative thing like I, I'm, I'm gonna obviously take down something that's new to me or interesting to me and the Mashaikh here might take down some thing, something else I remember when I started uh, in 2014 I even remember my first class was Usul al-Fiqh so I was basically writing down every word the Sheikh was saying like 
this and this and this and that and, this. Mm-hmm. and that's because you're new so what what that does is everything becomes new to you so yeah. after a while you get the hang of it and some things that you've studied before will come again and yeah. you'll come across it again and you won't feel the need to take down those issues mm-hmm. so i would say just do as i did <laughs> But just take down everything that's new to you in the beginning. Sahih. And then after a while, while you're still doing this, inshallah, you'll do it a long time. Mm-hmm. You'll find that, all right, this one I, I already know, this one I already know. And then you'll start to re- realize what's beneficial to you and taking it down. As mm-hmm. well, take down the major points of the lesson as well. Like, yeah. um, you always, I, I always like divide, as the brother did, uh, divide the lesson into like the, the sulb al the, the the major topic of the lesson. What's mm-hmm. this lesson for? So this lesson is basically in aqidah. So try and organize that. Mm. The first topic, the second topic, the third topic. The sheikh is explaining maybe one sentence in the book. Mm-hmm. Right? The sentence just show like the major explanation. Yeah. And then you have the random benefits that the sheikh like sort of yatazakka alayk and mm. yatsaddaq alayk yeah. and he'll give it yeah. to you mm. like that comes athna al kalam like in while he's talking let's say ala fikra shay wa shay wa kadha and this yeah. can be mentioned and this and some of the sheikh mashayikh are really better at that. And that one is a bit more difficult but as I said in the beginning that one, after a while, you, you'll you start, especially if you're still with the same sheikh, oh, that one I heard. Oh, that mm-hmm. one is said a couple of times. Oh, that I remember like Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, Allah uh, Hafadu, had always some benefits that he would repeat. Yeah. And the first time I would write like, oh, mashallah, this is such a benefit. <laughs> and then after five or six years, oh, mashallah, he's mentioning that again. Mashallah. Yeah, you see. So uh, the, you'll get to that stage, inshallah, eventually with consistency. And you'll know like, all right, this is a benefit, I'll write it down. And this is something that Sheikh mentions often. I, I don't really need to do that. But in the beginning, uh, you'll definitely find a stage where you feel compelled to write everything down. Which is good, actually, mm. to be honest, because that's how the knowledge Sorry. sets as well. I, w- I would add to that. As w- I mean, I would also say that that's what I would recommend. But also, um, like you said, it's something that's kind of like relative, right? Like, So something that works for me might not work for you. Something that you find helpful might not work for the other person. True. Um, me, I do the same thing. I write down things that are important. I take the most, uh, what's, this, what's the topic being discussed? True. And then write the notes under it. But I also like using like color pens. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, like what I'm using right oh, now. Sure. You know, I have to have something color coded to change. So I'm going to be writing this one, the most important. Blue is kind of like notes on the side. Black is kind of like the sad things like you mentioned. <laughs> like just the sadaq ali again. If not, cut out. Um, uh, also, uh, I wanted to go back to Sheikh Abdul Muslim. You said you was taking notes from Sheikh Abdul Muslim. Yeah. What was that like? Uh, benefit of Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Muslim? Uh, amazing, Lina? amazing. Because his style of teaching, um, you have to really stick with it mm. to actually benefit from it. Yeah. I believe personally, because sh- the Sheikh goes through a lot like major books. So when I was there, when I got there, he was doing Sahih Muslim, which is a big book, and his style of teaching is just short commentary. So he just gives a short one or two comments on each hadith. But after the, uh, in the end, you'll have gone through a lot of the chapters that are concerning Islam. Because yeah. it's a jama'ah, you know, it takes a, the fiqh, uh, the aqidah, the tafsir. And yeah. all, like all of the chapters that are concerning Islam is in the book. Mm. So you'll have passed all through it and with the commentary of the sheikh mm. and the benefits and all of that. So it really like, it's, it's really like, as they say, the tariqat al kibar the way of the great scholars that mm. they give you the knowledge habba habba, like, yeah, yeah, bit by yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. And it's... You, you have that with the big books. And then the small books, you have another way of teaching, which mm-hmm. is also like s- still legitimate and valid, which is you really explain. Yeah. But his type of teaching was more ta'liqat. He just gives comments and explains yeah. and explains the difficult parts and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But after a while, you, you'll find yourself having studied large parts of the religion. Because yeah, yeah, the book yeah. forces you, if you stick with yeah, it. Exactly. He also has something uh, kind of unique with his lessons that I've seen, where he goes through the Rijal as well. Yeah, he goes through So the, he goes through and he's uh, mentioning the different yeah. names yeah. and who they study on and sometimes and giving some more taliqat than others. True, true. But like, at the end, you'll see that a lot of students pick up on them different names. Yeah. And pick up on the chain and see yeah, how it's yeah, connected. Yeah, yeah. So that was, that's beneficial as well. True. Um, also, going back to note-taking, I was want to say that sometimes note-taking can help you to stay more uh, attentive in the lesson true. as well. Some <laughs> people, they're sitting there and, you know, like, let's say, they listen to what we just said, which is take the most important, right? So it might be like, okay, I heard all this stuff. You know, five, yeah. ten minutes go past. They heard all of it. What usually starts happening? Starts they're thinking about they're, stuff. They're thinking about something else. Yeah, they yeah, might yeah. pull out their phone. Drifting away. They might start falling asleep, whatever the case may be. So note-taking is important also to keep you in, 
يعني connected to what the Sheikh is talking sure. about. No. I think, um, I mean, in this day and age, they started calling it note making, by the way. Note making. It's not called note taking anymore. Okay, that's a bit of No, no, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm, <joking. laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> no, it's actually note making. And, mm. and the reason for that is, and I've, I've already mentioned this book before, How to Take Smart Notes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. by that. I think he's Swedish, Sonk Arons. Really? He's a Swedish guy, yeah. He wrote, he wrote this book called How to Take Smart Notes. And he benefited from this German uh, sociologist. So it was had a specific uh, method called mm. Zettelkasten. But point is, he talked about a study that they have done mm. regarding some students who were taking notes, so to say, and some were told to just write down what the professor is saying, mm. like almost transcribe it. Yeah, yeah. And the other group were told, don't transcribe it, but put it in your own words. Yeah, yeah. Now guess, this, yeah, yeah, guess which group actually recalled more, understood more, and benefited more? The ones who made their notes. Those who made their yeah, notes. They didn't just take notes. <laughs> yeah. You know. So the point is, uh, it's not about writing down everything the sheikh says. It's, it's about writing down what the sheikh means or the meaning of his speech in your own words. Yeah. That, uh, if you like, activity that you're doing in the class, this is now active learning. You're really, really focused now. Because now you're not just like a parrot, just copying okay. things over. Mm. That's that's a very, uh, if you like, that's a very repetitive, uh, easy task. It's would more difficult to think about the meaning writing your own words. Would you say, though, that that might not be the best for a beginner, though? Like, for example, because obviously you're coming here. If you're writing it in a way that you understand it, who's to say that your understanding is actually correct? True. Like we talked about earlier, where you have a you have people who leave that same dars, that same hadara, but they all walk away with different understandings. You get what yeah, I'm yeah, I mean, look again. It goes back to look. What so I'm, is, get, I'm guessing asking objective? like, yeah, how do you combine yeah, between those two? My, my point is, what's the objective of the note? Those notes, anyway. Mm. That's the question. Yani, are you there to just write down everything the sheikh says, out of the fear that that knowledge will somehow get lost? Mm. Like maybe, maybe back in the days, I agree with you, mm. but now the audio is there. Mm. Transcription will probably come out <laughs> for all of the mashayir. You're not there to just preserve everything the Sheikh has said. That's not your objective anyway. Mm-hmm. So if 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 the I mean if you look at it in a sense that maybe you misunderstood him, well that's an issue then that you will quickly come to know of when you try to put in your own words, mm. as opposed to just copy. Because you'll probably copy his words mm. and not understand it, mm-hmm. sure. but you won't know you haven't understood it. So. But when you try and put his words in your own words, that's when you will realize that actually, I don't get it. Mm. What did the Sheikh actually say? Yeah. Yeah. And that will then obviously. Um, uh, cause you to go back and maybe ask a question or, or to whatever. So the point is, if you don't understand it, okay, then don't take that note. You've missed that. Maybe mm. go back like like the Sheikh has mentioned later on. Mm. But for the rest, write down what the Sheikh has said in your own words, mm. and, and and don't just copy everything just word for word. Yeah, I think there's um two things that you mentioned. One is, uh, I think I would still write down the benefit. But what I usually do is I put like a question mark beside it. Something that shows that I got to go back to that. Yeah, Because yeah. I didn't quite get it. Mm. Also, something important connected to that as well, which, which I think might be better than writing it for beginning or student knowledge in the way that you understand it, is make sure you have some type of study circle. Mm, for true. example, okay, I'm writing down my notes, right? But when we come back in and do notes, do you actually read the note as it is? Or do you look at the note explain and explain it true. already to your circle group? You yeah, explain yeah. it already. Yeah. So... If you do that, now this can help correct your understanding. And that's the best thing. They say, so the the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if Allah has given you that tawfiq and Allah has given you that ni'mah of having studious brothers who are studying with you such that you can actually sit down after the lesson mm-hmm. and every person kind of presents the notes that he took mm-hmm. and you kind of like, uh, you know, throw it off each other and, and you correct his note and he corrects your note. You have a little bit of discussion happening there. And that's that. That's a that's a major benefit. Allah mubarak. I mean, that's. I actually had yeah. a friend that did that. Uh, yeah. They they had that. Like he had he had a friend. So we used to go to Sheikh Salim al lesson in, mm. in fiqh, mm. and uh, he used to af- always after the class like go to like directly after the class go sit down with a friend mm-hmm. and they would repeat the lesson to and yeah, see. Yeah. The, and what I would find is that brother's retention of the dars was amazing yeah of course yeah, yeah. that's amazing. the best time the yeah. best time to return back to his after his, class his retention like he could like after a week he could repeat oh do you remember what the sheikh said regarding this mas'ala and, and in like detail it the same way the sheikh would do yeah, yeah and yeah. that shows the the the, the mudakara, how important how important it is to like repeat the knowledge and go back and study it and try it. and as the sheikh said in, in the beginning 
one of the most important things that you can do to really make sure that you've understood a mas'ala, a topic, a certain issue, is to explain it to another. So. If you can't really explain it, if you can't, if, if the, if you can't really find the words for it, even mm. if you feel you know it, you don't know it. You don't know it. You don't know it. Until you can explain it to your peer or to another one or like a, a student of yours in like in the country or so. whatever, so. You, haven't, you haven't really grasped the issue. Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. I think another angle, the mm. question is, mm. How to know what to write down? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think, and this is a misconception. I think a lot of the students they have, mm. when it comes to at al ala al kutub, yes, or this person he studied from books. A lot of people they kind of like take it as don't read books, only attend durus. La. Mm. My advice would be, before you actually go to the dars, yes, Prepare. read the metan definitely, hundred percent. That's the least you can do. Yeah. But also, if you manage to read one of the Mu'tabar Shuruh that's not too deep, but that gives you like a, a good understanding of the, of the metan, this will help you and save you a lot of time when it comes to taking notes. True. Because the amount of times it happened to me that I go to a dars mm. and the Sheikh mentioned something, he mentioned the benefit. I'm like, whoa, wow, this is the benefits of all benefits. And I write it down and it turns out to be something, you know, basic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something you know yeah. in the basic shuru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, hand, my hand was tired after the first class, <laughs> the first day of class. Like I was so tired, my hand, because I basically like I I I I bought a daftar and I felt like oh I've, I've like it's the first week and it's almost filled out because I was writing every word they were saying. Yeah, because everything everything's new. Everything's new. Yeah, <laughs> everything's new. Yeah, <laughs> so especially in that bab, that book you're taking usul al thalath with the sheikh. Mm. Go and read a sharh on surah al thalath before the class. Mm. That way you'll have benefit a lot of things. Number one, you're not going to be repeating things. That are already mentioned in this basic sharh, which you're gonna take anyway. Mm-hmm. Everyone takes one of those those basic sharh. So. And number two, also, now you can fill in the gaps. Mm. Now you're not there trying to catch everything. So. You're trying to fill the gaps. Okay, so I've seen this in the sharh. Okay, that's fine. I don't need to take notes on that. Oh, this is something new. This is from the sheikh. This is basic. This is not. And we mentioned as well before the benefit of memorizing the Quran, which is yeah. you don't have to write the whole ayah. Yeah, yeah. I would say when it comes to references, Aslan, you need to have some kind of shorthand. So for me, I wouldn't write out. A quote, if it's the whole quote, mm. I'll write like the first couple of words, mm. and then I put next to it ref. Yeah, that basically means that hey, take these that. couple of words, look for this statement or this hadith, or whatever, and there you have it. Yeah. Um, also, know. another sorry, and one last thing is mm. that really important. How do you know what resonates? Mm. I would say, don't become too logical about it. Mm. Right. It's just when you listen to the sheikh, you feel it. You feel that. Wow, this is a benefit. Mm. When you feel that feeling, write it down. And also, yeah. another thing I would do is I would kind of like rate the benefits in class. No, with yeah. exclamation marks. Yeah. So it's like uh, I would have like two exclamation marks. It was like wow, three exclamation marks. <laughs> it was like something that absolutely this can't yeah, be missed. Good, I put like idea. five exclamation marks. <laughs> then at the end yeah. of the class, you really know like what uh, stood out yeah. by just looking at the exclamation marks. You know, yeah, they yeah. can focus on those things. Yeah, that's a good idea. Even I like, used to my, I yeah. used to mark under it like make a big line under big it. Line, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, Focus yeah, on yeah, that's good. Use symbols and things like that. Even with regards to references, with me, when it comes to ayat, I do like the symbol for the ayat. Yeah, right? yeah. If hadith, I use like some type of brackets, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. quotations. You know, like I, I do different things to make sure I know what's being spoken about in yeah, the context. Yeah, everyone yeah. develops his Everybody thing, develops basically. along yeah. the way, you know? Yeah. Barakallah uh, uh, Moving on to the final segment, which this has been, honestly, subhanAllah. How many questions do we get about this? I think we opened the can of worms we last got, time and it just woo, blew up. To be honest, it was kind of building up for a while. We've been kind of like putting it to the side and there's been questions coming in and messages about debating in Islam. So we just said, Kalas, today let's deal with it. Um, I think it's appropriate and suitable. And if you look at all the questions, I can't really read all of them because there was at least five in the last week that was on this. But it sums up to these things that are right here on the screen, if you guys can see it. The first one is, when is it suitable to debate? First off, debating in Islam. Tell us about that. When is it suitable? If it's ever suitable, who is fit to do it? Reconciliation between debating and calling to good and forbidding evil. And is there a difference? Whoa. And what's it, how do I know debating from simply... Clarifying truth. Clarifying truth. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it to you guys first. Uh, either one of you guys, whoever would like to start Give it first. Give to the Sheikh. Tayyib, Abdul Wali, Faddal. Allah, akhi, the first thing we have to do, we have to define our terms. Sahih. <laughs> that's the say, basis. Yeah. yeah, when you say debating in Islam, that's an English word. Let's, let's look at the Arabic words mm. that would 
you would come across in the Quran and the Sunnah. Jameel. So the scholars, they mention you have something called Jidal, mm. you have Munadara, you have Mira. Mm. Okay. Um, when it comes to Jidal, which would, I think, translate to debating in Islam, that would probably be the closest mm -hmm. to all, um, then it's permissible under certain circumstances with certain conditions, and we'll mm. talk about that in a moment. But when it comes to Mira, mm. like, Mira is never acceptable. Mm -hmm. Mira is something that is madhmoom at all times. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he promises uh, a place, I think, في, uh, if I'm not mistaken, mm. for the one who leaves off Mira, mm. even, ولو كان محقا, no. وإن كان محقا, even if he's right, that he leaves off Mira. Yani argumentation. Yeah. Argumentation. argumentation, yes. Mm. So I think that would be the right translation for Mira. Jimmy. Jimmy. Argumentation is, is not permissible. No. Um, so that's, that's when it comes to the terms yani. so mm. when is it suitable obviously that's a, that's a whole uh, so, 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 so just no. going into that though as well okay we talked about the translation of it now debating we said this is something that is suitable in certain cases right yeah. and debating is usually to clarify something and you do it in the best manner with knowledge True. Yeah, for so certain the people. difference between mira and debating yeah whereas argumentation argumentation you're usually trying to call to a particular position yani, in an aggressive way uh, you're not doing it with hikmah you might even have knowledge I mean, the main thing really, I suppose, goes back to the objective, mm. right? When it comes to Mira, it's all about winning. Yeah, beating mm. your opposition. Exactly. It's all about beating your opposition. Yeah, no, That's what it's at about. any cost. At any cost. Yeah. It's not about finding out the truth. It's not about who's haq. It's not about, okay, brothers, uh, let's discuss this. If you're right, I will follow you. If you bring your dalil, if I'm, if I'm right, you follow me and let's look at the adil and, you know, I'm open-minded. Like, argumentation is basically, hey, you know, it's like a boxing match. Yeah. <laughs> Ever seen two boxers get into a ring and be like, you know, I'll, if you're stronger than me, I'll give up. La. <laughs> they, they, they'll go for it. So the same thing with Mira. Mira is all about may the, you know, the best Man debater win, win you know? Debater, it's not yeah. about haq. It's <laughs> about <laughs> I beat you in the debate. You so. know, I'm better than you. I got more people agree with me. And subhanAllah, I've come across akhi, mm. a, uh, this is program. SubhanAllah, which uh, I can't remember what it's called, right? Mm. But what they do is they bring on two different parties to debate certain things. Mm. And the one I came across, it was between some kuffar Ayan Hirsi Ali and a lot of these people, Murtaddeen and people that are against Islam, who basically the debate was is Islam a religion of violence or not? So obviously Ayan Hirsi and the likes they're arguing that it is, you know, it is Murtadda. And they brought another miskina, yani not even a person of mm. knowledge mm. to debate that Islam is not a religion of violence. Mm. But what they do is before the debate, they take people's opinion on it. Before the debate. Uh, what like, do you mean opinion? Like, uh, their opinion on is Islam a religion of violence or not? So mm. all the people that are attending, they mm. take their opinion they on it. They take a poll. They take a poll. Uh -huh. Okay? And then after the, the debate, they take another poll. They take another poll. Mm. And then they see who was able to convince more people and how it swayed. And that's the kind of like metric they used to see who, who won the debate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was truth versus falsehood. You see? So that, that's the problem. That's not how we measure truth and falsehood. Yeah. You know? Because... This person who is apparently standing up for the haq he might have some ba'af, might have some weakness with him. Mm -hmm. And the other person who's debating for batil might be better in debating. So Yeah, and somebody also could come and they're, they're fasih, yani. they're yeah, eloquent true. and they know how to put their argument forth. No. Where the other person, yani, they're not the same. They're not the same. Know? And that's not a representation of truth and falsehood. So when it comes to this, for everyone, yani, when it comes to debates, the, the measure is not... Yes, who managed to convince more people, or who managed to beat the other person? Or with who his managed own. to out embarrass the other person? It's not about that. Yeah. It's not about it. It's about who has the Quran and Sunnah and the way of the Salaf on his side. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Now, Jamil. So, uh, did you have something to add? Can I go back to that? Yeah, yeah, go back. Yeah, to, so so when, when it's because uh, we need to look at like the, the parameters for when we are allowed to debate. Because mm -hmm. as the Sheikh said. The, Debating the word jidal mm. is uh, mentioned in the Quran. Mm. Uh, no. the, human, the human being is the most argumentative mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. in Surah Al-Kahf and, so, and so on. And we've seen like looking through the nusus, the text of the Quran and Sunnah, mm -hmm. almost all the places where uh, jidal is mentioned, like uh, debating, mm -hmm. it's mentioned in a negative manner. Like as I said in the beginning, what kind of insan actually change it? It's a condemning way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except some parts. Yeah. As in, 
ايفن ان حديث من طلب العلم لمال به السفهاء وجادل به العلماء او يصرف وجوه الناس اليه ادخله الله النار يعني هو يا يا هو ايفر سيكس نوليدج تو لايك يماري به السفهاء تو بي لايك تو بي جو باك اند فور ارجيو وذ ذا فولش يا او او تراي اند كومبيت وذ ذا سكولرز او تو تو ميك بيبل لوك ات هيم ان سيرت مانر واي لايك using fame basically yeah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to enter him to Jannah and this is a hadith is authenticated enter him to tell him yeah. which enter him enter, yeah sorry yeah. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> like, sometimes I use the Arabic terms and just yeah, yeah. go, go <laughs> on <laughs> so this uh, obviously is authentic hadith in Ibn Majah and others uh, authenticated by Albani uh, and this really shows that the general position in of debating in Islam mm. is a not like allowed Like yeah. the asl, that's the you, asl. Yeah, that's the asl. That's the ground, like groundwork. After that, let's see the the verses in the Quran that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions that He encourages jihad, yeah. which is wajadilhum billati hi ahsan. Yes. Uh, and argue with them in a in the best manner. Yes. After doing the the previous step was udhu ila sabila rabbika bil hikmati wal mu'adat al hazan kala to your Lord's way with hikma with wisdom and, and good reminders. Mm. After that, if that doesn't work, wajadilhum billati ahsan. No. So. That from these verses and texts, the scholars have extracted some conditions on when we debate in Islam. Mm-hmm. So basically, first of all, it has to be with a good niyyah, with a good uh, intention. intention. Yeah. And that this is shown in the hadith. Because the person that studied for bad intention mm-hmm. was condemned. Yes. Even uh, was threatened with the hellfire. Exactly. And which shows that you have to have a good condition, uh, good intention. What's the so. good intention? to as the sheikh was in uh, discussing like helping islam making the haq clear yeah. sometimes even like uh, making sure that the batil does not uh, get spread get spread mm. and so on and so forth mm. and the other one is the second question which is why i wanted to <laughs> yeah, back yeah, up yeah. a bit yeah. which is who is fit to do it and that's the second condition yeah. and this is uh, when we studied this topic with uh, in, the, in the in the class in class uh, the sheikh actually pointed out uh, an important thing. And he said, it's not really sufficient to be knowledgeable. Like, the knowledge in debating is not sufficient. Mm-hmm. You have to be knowledge- knowledgeable in the w- art of debating as well. No. And this is something that uh, Ibn Abdul Bar, actually, uh, the, the, the great scholar, the Andalusian scholar from uh, Al-Andalusi, uh, the Maliki scholar, in his book, Jami' Bayan Al-Ilm Wa Fadlihi, mm. he actually spends, he actually It discusses the issue of jadal in Islam, debating in Islam mm. extensively. So if you want to go back, look. Yeah. Uh, one of the things he said, he said, كانوا يقولون, they used to say, كل مجادل عالم. So mm. every debater is, an, uh, is, is a scholar. Mm. But not every scholar is a debater. Mm. So mm. this fun, this art of debating is a specific art that not everyone should go into. Mm-hmm. You need some, like, uh, you need the tools of it, basically. Mm-hmm. You need to, mm-hmm. the tools of the trade. نعم يعني كل مجادل ان ذات بارتيك نريشن از ان كل مجادل يعني من اهل العلم ايوه وز دوينج جدال وذ نوت اني ون هو نوز هاو تو ديبيت از سكولر لا نو نو يعني از ا بريكويز سمثينج يا سمثينج ذات مور خاص يعني از ا هاي ليفل لايك اوكي يور عالم از ون ثينج بات يو اولسو نو لايك امام الشافعي فور اكزامبل سبحان الله اخي يعني اي ثينك ذا سم اوف ذا نريشنز ذات منشنز ذات يو نو ذا اهل الكلام ذي كاين لايك هاد ا فوت هولد اند ذي ريلي هاد ذي ور ليترلي يو نو almost you know strangling the people of sunnah yeah. until yeah. imam shafi'i came yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. imam shafi'i was an amazing uh, debater so and why i bring that because uh, one and, of and the he questions. has and he has sorry and he has so many so many statements true true warning against debating and kalam and he mentioned as well that never have i debated with a, a scholar except that I've, i've 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 managed to win uh, if you like mm-hmm. and never have i debated with an ignorant except that i i lose to true. him showing that you know that that, that The Sufaha, <laughs> if you like, mm-hmm. <laughs> they have no boundaries. <laughs> Allah was that. So, uh, yeah, as I was saying, so who's fit to do it? Mm-hmm. Because one of the questions I, uh, I think you brought up before we discussed, uh, we started discussing, it was like he mentioned, uh, one of the persons mentioned that name of the scholar who was known for debating. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. I can go back to it if you uh, like. And this is the thing that might be difficult for people to understand. Uh, because we have so many narrations from our pious predecessors the mm. malik and so on and so forth that say, that actually say don't debate yeah and then we have scholars who do it yeah we have the verses supporting it so how mm. do you reconcile this mm. uh, and the issue is if you could 
if you if if these three conditions that I'm going to explain, the first one with the niyyah, the mm-hmm. intention, the second one, if you're fit to do it, and the third one, the maslaha of it. Mm-hmm. If you're if these contention if these conditions are applicable to you, then you might do it. But if not, then the asal is as we go back to well, it's not. not. And if you have like because one of the famous narrations from Imam Malik basically is what when the person who wanted to argue with him he said. Uh, all right. Uh, if you defeat me, yeah. and Imam, he goes to Imam Malik, if I defeat you, then you follow me. Yeah. And Imam Malik says, all right. If if uh, and if a third person comes and de- defeats us, and he says, oh, then we will follow him. Yeah. And then Imam Malik says his famous statement: uh, Every if if every time a person who's a more skilled debater comes to us. Should we follow him and leave off what the Prophet ﷺ came with? So this shows like the Mamalik has a big stance. Uh, mm. And it gives the indication of what? We don't debate. We don't debate. Mm-hmm. No. And then you find, as I said, Imam Shafi'i, you've got the statements of Ibn Abdul Bar. And there's actually an interesting narration from Imam Malik himself mm. where a person tries to him. And he says, the innovations in our land have increased. Mm. And I'm preparing myself to debate them and refute them and so on and so forth. Mm. So Imam Malik says, and listen, to, this is beautiful, because he says, if you feel qualified, and if you feel the need, mm. then go do it. Mm. And this shows that even Imam Malik knows that in some certain situations and certain conditions, it's suitable. It's suitable. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the third condition uh, that I was uh, planning to, uh, or l- let's say with the first, uh, the second, the, su- the su- suitability. Mm-hmm. Um, as I was saying, you need knowledge of the art of debating and mm-hmm. when we studied like this topic with our Mashiach, it's really interesting to see how dangerous of a field it is yeah because yeah, yeah. you need to be alert you need to be like one of the Mashiach said it's 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 you've got a lot of traps in front of you yes you've got basically you've got fallacies people mm-hmm. use fallacies in the art of debating mm-hmm. to say the wrong thing but in order to get you to say the wrong thing as well yeah or like um, force fall into you, a trap yeah fall into a trap or try force to corner you, you. Try to corner you doing Ilzama on you and saying basically if you say this then that means XYZ and you're really not saying XYZ yeah. or XYZ is so horrendous that you, you make yourself like oh I can't really follow through with that line of argument mm. and people listening as well they get affected as well yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, for instance uh, like a, a common fallacy uh, let's take an example that people can relate to and it's away from uh, like uh, away from some issues mm-hmm. uh, let's take the issue of atheism like mm. uh, let, let's take the issue of uh, evolution perfect one of the common fallacies people do is when mm. discussing it is that they appeal to the majority mm. so what they say is you cannot um, uh, you cannot uh, accept you cannot like deny evolution why because mm. so many scholars cause the amount of scholars that have accepted it should force you to accept it as well mm-hmm. so they're scientists they're, yeah the scientists yeah. their yeah. professors their phd holders their uh, uh, researchers and all of that and like this is it's been going on for a while because mm-hmm. so we have a, a huge amount of scholars saying that evolution is real mm-hmm. you have wrong. to accept it yeah. that's a fallacy because in no way or shape is a, a the appeal to a majority a suitable evidence in something mm-hmm. sometimes mm-hmm. the majority can be oh, mistaken oh, exactly so if you're not really aware of the fallacies that and the, the things that they use mm-hmm. as a debater, mm-hmm. you might fall into that. Sahih, sahih. Uh, yeah, so the suitability is really important. Like you have to, as I said, as, a, as the quote says, you need to be a skilled debater and mm-hmm. not just knowledgeable in the field. Yeah, Montez. Yeah. So you, ma- you mentioned three things, Akhi, the, mm-hmm. the correct objective, um, having the ability. Yeah. Yes. And then third one was? The third one was Ikhl- the maslaha. Uh, the maslaha. The maslaha. Yeah, That's point. another important Really, really important point now. Mm. For me, basically, because uh, uh, when you discuss Qawa'id al Faqiyya, Al Iz ibn Abdul Salam and his book, Qawa'id al Kubra, and all of them, yeah. they discuss Maslaha and says the whole religion goes back to Maslaha al Masjid. Yeah. And I think a Sayyid says in Qawa'id al Nadair, Al Ashbah wa Nadair, sorry, uh, in the, uh, when he's discussing this Qawa'id, he says uh, their whole religion rotates, uh, rotates around or like revolves around Al Masalih al Mafasid. Yeah. yeah, you have to explain that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, and he says that and since removing mafasid is actually jalb al masalih, bringing masalih, mm. so the whole religion is jalb al masalih, which is important because sometimes you have to evaluate the situation. Mm-hmm. Let's now, just say this time of masalih and mafasid. Masalih also, masalih are the 
um, the, the greater good or the good, yeah, the, 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 the benefits yeah. and mas- mafasid the harms. are the harms. Yeah, yeah. So, so you have harms. to bring as much benefit as possible yeah. and, and and repel as much harm as possible. Sahih. Yeah. So Sahih. this is true because as a person, as a scholar, as a student of knowledge, you have to evaluate like the harms and the benefits of debating 100%, X, Y, and Z. 100%. And yeah. sometimes it might be beneficial for someone to do it in a in different country, in a different environment and you can't really go on that and say, all right, since he debated, I'm going to debate here. Exactly. In, in, it's not, it might not be suitable for your particular Exactly. Condition. And sometimes people debate, like, uh, people debate issues that have become, if, in Tashara Amruha, the thing has become widespread. Widespread, yeah. But it's widespread in one country, but it might not be widespread in another country. Sahih, sahih. Regarding this, subhanAllah, and I think, just generally speaking, the reason we have a lot of these problems, I think, I think more tulab should teach usul al-fiqh and al-qa'id al-fiqh <laughs> really because it, it really sets the, the groundwork. True. So so differentiating first and foremost between the main rule, the general, the default, the asal mm. and things that are exceptions to the rule, exceptions, differentiating with these, between those, two, these two things is really important. Mm-hmm. Okay? And also like you mentioned, the issue of masalih and mafasid is also really important. So a lot of people unfortunately because of their lack of knowledge because of the lack of knowledge of most people out there who are that prominent on, on, on YouTube and the likes what, what happens is that everything becomes black and white mm. everything becomes black mm. and white yes or no yeah. so same thing with the debating in Islam I think this particular the whole topic it really came up because people they see a clash like okay uh, some people there are narrations that mention that you should debate and Allah said mm. and now here you are saying you shouldn't debate in Islam it's like mm. you know where, where, what's the contra- there's True. no contradiction mm-hmm. there's no contradiction there's there's more to it mm-hmm. those conditions and the conditions exactly so like he's mentioned mm-hmm. right now the brother those conditions mm-hmm. make a major major difference mm-hmm. and also the general rule which is that debating is not something that should be done yeah that's the asal that's the asal yeah. that's the first thing mm-hmm. because now why did this topic come up anyway it's because unfortunately this has become the asal True. This, yeah. if you look at, at YouTube and Twitter and those people who are doing da'wah, yes, you'll find that most people, or a lot of people, yes, they are taking this path yeah. of debating, mm-hmm. and a lot of people they see it as the way to prove haq yeah, true. or or to to prove if something is falsehood, mm-hmm. to the extent that you, what we need to know is that the people of falsehood, generally speaking, al bid'ah aslan, they kind of like cultivate their followers upon that, yeah. and or from a personal level personal level as you know I, I I went to a Dibandi school I think mm. I mentioned that last time sah? Mm-hmm. so um, I went to Dibandi school when I was young and this was actually something they used to teach us mm. how to debate as a matter of fact on one occasion mm. they said okay ta'al, we are going to debate today is debate time um, fulan 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 okay come up to come here to the front you guys are going to debate and your stance is that smoking is haram Okay, okay, you fulan, 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 and Muhammad, ta'al. You're going to stand here, you're going to debate on the stance that smoking is halal. Mm. I said, no, I'm not going to debate. <laughs> I'm like, how am I going to debate for something that I know is haram? No, 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 it's not about that. It's about developing your skill to debate. Even though you hold it to be haram, Muhammad, it's not a big deal. You know, come here and, and at least speak, uh, you know, on behalf of, of those people that think it's halal. This is how they used to, this is how they used to cultivate us in that Dibandi school at the age of 13, 14, 12, young kids. So the point is that Ahlul Bid'a, and, 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 and that's why it's really important what you've mentioned, which is you have to have the ability. Why? And Sheikh Suleiman Rahili mentioned this as well when he talked about uh, debating people. He mentioned that when it comes to people of falsehood, he mentioned one benefit, he mentioned one advantage, but we need to know that people of falsehood, they have advantages. Of mm-hmm. people of the haq when it comes to debating. Mm-hmm. Number one, Sheikh Salman Rahim, this is what he mentioned. He said that the people of falsehood, يخاطبون العاطفة. وصاحب السنة يخاطب العقل. He said that the people of falsehood, they are addressing people's emotions. But you are, inter- you are as a person of sunnah, you're addressing people's logic and intellect and, and the Quran and the sunnah, you're speaking from a logical perspective. And we all know the emotions trump True. logic for the most part mm-hmm. when it comes to decision making. Mm-hmm. People are more likely to fall for the guy who triggers their emotions. Mm-hmm. So that's a disadvantage that we have, okay, when it comes to debating. So we, we need to be aware of that. And also, like I mentioned, a lot of these people of falsehood, they have actually, they're trained in debating. 
Mm-hmm. Those that have graduated from your Harvards or your D Bundy mm-hmm. schools or whatever, Sahih. it's actually something they've studied at school or at university level, which mm-hmm. is how to debate people Sahih. and win a debate. Sahih. There's another disadvantage. A third disadvantage, that, that basically, that's also there is that you generally speaking as a person of the Haq, you're very wary and careful mm-hmm. with the claims that you make. Sure. Yes? And you're very careful answering or saying things without knowledge because you know Allah says in the Quran mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so you have that level of holding back and that level whereas the person of falsehood normally doesn't have that he doesn't mind contradicting what he said a week ago as long as it allows him to win the debate and he lie about it as well and lie mm-hmm. about it too and he doesn't care if he has to come up with the answer there and then without knowing the answer yeah. yes just coming up with something but you you hold back so now the person who's watching the debate sees it as a weakness it's like oh you see muhammad he brought a point and you had nothing to say about it but in reality is well you could have made something up you could have yeah. thought on your feet like they say but out of fear of allah and speaking about the religion of allah without knowledge you say okay you know i hold back even though i've got something maybe i'm 90 percent sure but i'm not gonna do so until i double I'm check double check and i'm sure mm-hmm. so that's also a disadvantage Sahih. so it's, it's not that's why we shouldn't open that door to debate. Now, Sheikh Suleiman Ruhayli, Hafizahullah, he mentioned, and I think we also have to differentiate between something else, mm. which is, and this relates to the question about Sheikh Al-Albani. Mm. There's a major difference between someone coming to you and asking you a question, yeah. mm-hmm. yes, and you not knowing what his intention is, yeah. and then entertaining that until maybe eventually it turns out that he's just here to argue, to argue and then you just repel him, which mm. Sheikh Al-Albani done a lot of times. Mm. It's like, okay, I've, I've given you what I have. Mm. <laughs> and when the person starts going in circles, he just stops it right there. He says, go, go, next one. Yeah. He's done that a lot of times. Mm. But you can't close that door because some people, they might come, they might have valid questions, right? So, so there's a back and forth there. Oh. But how do you equate that with setting up a specific time, mm. event, mm. let's come on YouTube, well, uh, in some kind of place, some venue, location, yeah. location mm. and let, let me debate with this and that person. Those are two different things. And now even having, you know, mediators between the two. Mediators between the two and times. Or this is different now. Mm. This is different. And also, now, this turns into a completely different mas'ala, mm. which is having debates in public. Mm-hmm. True. Having debates with people of bid'ah in public. Mm. Sheikh Salman Ruhili says that this is not allowed, but there are two exceptions. Mm-hmm. Two exceptions. The first exception is that if it is that you are going to them, okay? Mm-hmm. So now you're not, your audience and the people of the Sunnah are not being exposed to falsehood. Uh, and, and the person of falsehood doesn't have an opportunity now to spread his falsehood and his shubha to your audience because now you're going to them just like Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu has done with the khawarij sure. so a lot of people say yeah but Ibn Abbas debated the khawarij yes he debated the khawarij but he went to them he didn't expose Ahl Sunnah to their falsehood that's one thing or the Sheikh mentioned or if it is the case that the bid'ah has been so widespread yes and everybody has knows the shubha, yes, then now you come and you refute it and you debate in order to find the haq. That's a different, again, different maslaha. Because yeah, the maslaha true. now, the mafsada of exposing Ahl sunnah yeah, to the shubha, that mafsada is not there anymore. Because yeah. the bid'ah has been widespread. Sahih. But alhamdulillah, in this day and age, with our online audiences, everyone has his own audience. Yeah. you got your 10,000 followers, you got his 3,000 followers, he has his 20,000 followers. Why would you now debate with a person of innovation, bring his shubha, has now uploaded to your to your channel, mm-hmm. yes, for the sake of clarifying the truth and, and expose the people to this sort of battle. That's, that, that is not an exception to the rule, like mm-hmm. uh, the Sheikh has mentioned these two exceptions to the rule. And finally, regarding the ayah, mm-hmm. it is really important. Mm-hmm. To understand the ayah with the conditions mm-hmm. that we've mentioned, mm-hmm. Allah also says in the Quran, وَلَا تُجَادِلُ أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي أَحْسَنْ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْهُمْ so here in that other ayah, there's an exception. Mm. There's a qaid. No. Here Allah says that debate with them with that which is good. Mm. طبعًا, go back to the books of tafsir regarding billati ahsan, what does it mean? You'll see that it doesn't include argumentations. because That's not billati ahsan. Mm-hmm. But does that mean we should debate with everyone? Mm-hmm. La. Allah tells us in Surah Ankabut that do not debate with the people of the book. Yes? Except with that which is good. Except for those who mm-hmm. are oppressive. Those of them who are oppressive don't be- debate with them. What's meant by that is those who come just for the sake of arguing, those who come to for mira, like we've mentioned, sure. we should not entertain that. They just okay? want to win the argument. Yeah. Those who yeah. just want to win the argument and they're not there to accept the truth, we should turn away from that. Mm. We should only clarify the truth uh, for those who are seeking seeking the truth. And I don't know if the time allows, but I had a quote from 
الامام الاجوري سم ون ريل كويك ريل كويك بيفور وي ام كاز وي كان ليف ذات تو ذا كونكلوجن سو تو ثينجز اي جست وونت تو ريد ذا كويشن بيكوز وي ديد برينج اب شيك البني اند اي وونت تو ميك شور ايفري ون انديرستود ذا ذا فيو بيبل هو ار فيوينج اند ذا بيبل هو ار ليسننج وات ذا كويشن واز اي سيد السلام عليكم احسن الله عليكم از ات ذا كيس ذات ذا اصل ريجاردينج بيدينج ديبيتينج اهل البدع از ذات ات از امبرميسبل ان براكتس اسبيشلي فور ذا لاي بيبل سوتش از ماي سيلف بت اندر سيرتن كونديشنز ات از بيرميسبل كويشن مارك اند وي انسر ذس بت اي سيد اسكينج ذس As many of our ulama, like Sheikh Al Bani, in present times would debate Ahl Ahl Bid'a. I think we dealt with that. Also, I wanted to um, give kind of like a conclusion of everything, summarize everything we just talked about, so that the viewers can walk away, like we said, talking, taking notes and things like that. <laughs> They can have something very clear, right? So the first one we said uh, is ikhlas. Okay, having sincerity. When uh, if that's established, then you can go ahead and look at the other conditions. The second one, suitability. Suitability meaning okay after you've already tried calling them to Islam in a in a way which is uh, appropriate and yani not relying on debating it's yani now it's become the situation where debating is the only last resort. Then we said having knowledge but not only knowledge itself but knowledge of debating too. So you need both of them. True. And we mentioned Ibn Abdul Bar he mentions this uh, in was that Tamhid right? Mm, oh, it's Jamia Bayan. Bayan. Jazakallah khair. So. Them is those three things. Then we have the fourth thing, which is the maslaha, meaning the overall benefit outweighs the harms. True. And this maslaha can differ from place to place. It can it can be something which is a maslaha, for example, in Riyadh, but not really a maslaha, so to say, for the people over in Egypt, yeah. Yeah. for example. So you have to look and see what is if it's a maslaha and if it's not. And I think it's important to note here to look at the maslaha by asking the people of dhikr, uh, ahl dhikr yeah. as well. You know, don't rely on your own, you know, so to say, um, whims and desires. Um, then we mentioned at the bottom uh, some interesting points to go along with it when dealing with these people. And that's first to take in consideration when looking at this muscle, how that falsehood, uh, the people who who argue with falsehood, generally speaking, they themselves are going off of feelings and they're not bound by the same rules of Ahl Sunnah. They will easily go ahead and make things up on the spot. They'll go, th- they'll go ahead and lie. They'll go ahead and change the narrative. They'll do whatever. Whereas people of Ahlul Sunnah, you're at a default in a way because you're sitting there and you're trying to hold your tongue and have from some fear of Allah Taala. Whereas Ahlul Bidah, they'll be careless with it. They don't, they don't really care. And then the brother mentioned some statements from Sheikh Suleiman, and he mentioned two uh, points, which is exceptions. Uh, one of the from the exceptions will be if these conditions are met, that you go to them, meaning. Like how Ibn Abbas did with the Khawarij, yeah, yeah, we mentioned it last not time. Not be open, ex- exactly. We mentioned in last Abbas, podcast. Yeah, you mentioned Ibn Abbas last time. The guy who came to him, remember? Yeah, yeah. Sheikh yeah. Ibn Abbas. Yeah, yeah. He didn't want to debate. You yeah, said yeah. you're not here. Exactly, and he Is said, he? "Go what? Go to the. Let's come to the office." Because he didn't want to expose. He didn't want to expose it. Exactly. No. Bala Khalafik. And then uh, also that that bid'ah is, or that misconception, or that doubt, whatever the case may be, is widespread. Okay, it's widespread, meaning, yani now it's out and open. Mm. Yeah, so now you can debate now you can debate it the people need to know the clarity in this issue yeah. which also like Imam Ahmed's time for example yeah. Imam Ahmed's time يعني, everybody يعني, yeah, he debated it's it. like you know or even yeah, if, if you put in a certain situation mm. with, with a wali al-amar mm-hmm. you know and, and you're kind of like representing the haqq like you mentioned masalah and mafasid I think this is really something very important to go back to and it also brings the important point with this who He's decides what yeah. the maslah and mafsada is Sahih. you go back to the people of knowledge Mom-tas. it's not up to me it's not up to you it's exactly. not up to flan alan the scholars they look at it mm-hmm. and then they can judge if the maslah outweighs the mafsada and, and that's very important because sometimes you yourself with some of us you know with our limited ability and knowledge may think that yes it's something that's very loud we must deal with it then you ask the people of, of knowledge and they have a whole nother tariqah yeah. Yeah. and it's and it and it saves you from causing more harms because Sheikh Fawzan even mentioned this about Uh, and it was in the maqta we are looking at from uh, the difference between uh, yeah. argumentation and, yeah. and debating. And he says, at times, you can go and let's say you did, you know, win the debate and people understand now you dealt with the shubha. But now it's like to sense it. Yani, at least the next thing. Yeah. Another debate sprung, another shubha might have sure. sprung from that one. Yeah. Then you go and deal with that. Then another one might spring and it just keeps going. And once you open the door and it keeps on going mm. and then you'll want to draw the line. People are going to say, "Oh, you see, 
he's afraid. True. Yeah. You see, he's a coward. Yeah. And then you, at that point, you can't argue that, oh, no, it's against the Sunnah. Huh? It's against the Sunnah today, yeah? Huh? <laughs> it's like against the Sunnah yesterday when you were debating them. Wow. So don't open that door. Yeah, yeah Sunni, yeah, Salafi. Do not open that door. Mm-hmm. Once you open that door, Allah, it's a door that's yeah. very hard to close. And the last thing, Barakallahu Fikum, just connected to all of that, is that no matter if the case, there are those people who you would never argue with or never debate with, I should say. You go back and forth with because they're oppressive, like we mentioned in the ayah, no. where they're going to they're gonna lie, they're going to deceive, they're going to make things up. They're gonna, they don't want the truth, Aslan. No. So you talking to them and debating with them, no. this one brings us to a statement by Imam Ahmed. I've read one of the tweeted this mm. recently. قيل لأحمد بن حمل رحمه الله إذا أمرت شخصا بمعروف فلم ينتهي if you command someone with the good, but he mm. doesn't stop doing it. Sah? Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if he debates back or whatever. Your objective here is to command with the good and forbid the evil. Mm-hmm. So you've commanded with the good, but he continues with the evil he's doing. قال أحمد دعه. أحمد said leave him. Mm-hmm. Why? إن زدت عليه ذهب الأمر بالمعروف وصرت منتصرا لنفسك. He said leave him. Why? Because if you increase on that, you continue commanding with the good and you continue pushing it, then... The Amr Ma'roof has gone away and it turns into uh, mun- you become someone who's sort of um, calling to yourself calling yeah. to yourself mm. and coming to the aid of, of your own ego and, mm. and, and what have you. SubhanAllah. Oh, if I can read uh, Al Ajuri's statement, hey, Jimmy, love us. it's beautiful. I'll try to keep it as, as concise as possible. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, but he so was, we're coming up on two hours now, right? Yeah, mashallah, mm. tabarakallah. But he brings up these exact questions mm-hmm. that I love the audiences they have mm-hmm. he actually answers it فَإِنْ قَالَ قَائِلٍ someone says وَإِنْ كَانَ رَجُلٌ قَدْ عَلَّمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عِلْمًا فَجَاءَهُ رَجُلٌ يَسْأَلَهُ عَنْ مَسْأَلَةٍ فِي الدِّينِ mm-hmm. a man, someone who Allah has taught him knowledge if a man comes to him asking him about an issue in the religion يُنَازِعُهُ mm-hmm. فِيهَا وَيُخَاصِمُهُ and he wants to go back and forth with him regarding mm-hmm. that issue in the deen mm-hmm. فَهَلَّهُ أَن can he debate with him mm-hmm. in order to establish the hujjah against this person? He said, This is what we have been prohibited from, and this is what the aim of the Muslimin have warned us against. She's okay, what are we going to do then if we can't debate him? He says, قيل له إن كان الذي يسألك مسألته يسترشد بها إلى طريق الحق للمناظرة. You see the difference? He said, if this person who's asking the question is seeking guidance from you, he doesn't want to debate. Then give him the guidance in the best way possible from the kitab and the sunnah. Mm-hmm. And the statements of the, of the companions radiallahu anhum. And from the statements of the imams of the muslimin. وَإِنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ مُنَاظَرَتَكْ وَمُجَادَلَتَكْ فَهَذَا الَّذِي كَرِهَهُ الْعُلَمَاءِ But if it is that he actually wants to debate you, then this is what the scholars, they have disliked. فَلَا تُنَاظِرْهُ وَحْذَرْهُ عَلَى دِينِكْ Do not debate with him and beware of him for your religion, let alone him. Because he'll come with shubahat that might even affect you. So even this sense of arrogance whereby you think that you are immune to their shubahat, that itself is a major, major, major thing that you have to look into, subhanAllah. Yeah, you need to fear for yourself. Yeah. You need to fear for yourself before anyone. Mm. Um, then he says, فَإِنْ قَالَ نَدَعُهُمْ يَتَكَلَّمُونَ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَنَسْكُتْ عَنْهُمْ Wallah, he just, just the question. Exactly what we're going through right exactly now. Exactly what we're going through. Yeah. He said, so do we leave them speak with batil and mm. we stay quiet? قِيلَ لَهُ سُكُوتُكَ عَنْهُمْ وَهَجْرُكَ لِمَا تَكَلَّمُوا بِهِ أَشَدُّ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ مُنَاظَرَتِكَ لَهُمْ Allah Akbar He said you being quiet and boycotting them and not paying any attention to them He said this is more severe upon them than you debating them Allah Akbar قال أحد العلماء في ذلك One of the scholars said regarding that لست براد عليهم أو لست لست براد عليهم أشد من السكوت He said you will not refute them in a way that is more severe, more severe than being quiet mm. regarding them. Fain qala qail. Somebody says, okay, when might we be in a situation whereby we just have to debate them? Okay, when does that happen? Qila lahu al ittirar inna ma yakunu ma imam sahib madhhab su. He said the issue of ittirar, which is kind of like an exception to the rule, yeah. which is compulsory out of yeah. because of ittirar. Yeah. 
he says yeah he says that's with an imam sahib madhab so if you have one of these imams of of, of misguidance oh. yes فَيُمْتَحَنُ الناس وَيَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَى مَذْهَبِهِ فَيَمْتَحَنُ الناس he's calling people to his madhab كَفِعْلِ مَنْ مَضَى فِي وَقْتِ أَحْمَدْ بِنْ حَمْبَلْ like the time of Ahmed he's a test for the people and he's calling people to his madhab yes especially the imam he's like a ruler he's got authority and he's he's causing fitna to the people like it happened at the time of Ahmed Ahmed bin Hanbal you see here now now that's a different situation now of course now there's a different mafsa there's a different maslah involved here the bid'ah has spread And he said, what if someone says, okay, mm. we're just going to debate just mm. to benefit. Mm. Okay, well, I took everything you said. We're just yeah. for the sake of benefit, yeah, Sheikh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> can, we ben- can we debate? قيل له هذا كلام هذا كلام ظاهر وفي المناظرة غيره ولكن إن أردت وجه السلامة في المناظرة لطلب الفائدة. He said, you want to benefit? Now he's talking about, okay, so you just you want to debate. Yes, for the sake of benefit. Mm. Let's say what we would call, huh? And this monada is not even talking about jidal actually, which kind of is like a discussion. Discussion. The, the, yeah. the, the, this, would, uh, this would be a different type of monada where sometimes be, even between madahib and it's not regarding the usul al-deen, the foundations of the deen. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, that's the yeah. bit I jumped. Yeah. So there's yeah. a part here that he talks about fiqh as well. Yeah. The monada in fiqh. Yeah, he talked yeah. about that as well. Yeah. That one is a really more like, it's a different topic. Yeah, yeah, it's open. Okay. Ahsan, yeah. Ahsan. So now he's talking about the monada of the kind like discussions mm. in issues yeah. in which you can have a discussion so. because in the usul of deen there's no discussion to be had there's nothing yeah that's <laughs> clear quran is clear hadith mm. is clear there's nothing but iqamat <laughs> hujja mm. you know so. establishing the proof so how to have the munadhara then that is permissible um so he mentions that فإذا كنت أنت, he says if you're hijaz and he's iraqi and let's say two of you want to talk about something mm. and فإن كنت ما تريدان السلامة وطلب الفائدة and you want to be safe فَقُلْ لَهُ رَحِيمَكَ اللَّهِ سَيْتُ مِنْ اللَّهِ هَفْ مَرْسِي أَنْ يُوْ هَذِي الْمَسْأَلَةِ قَدْ اِخْتَلَفَ فِيهَا مَنْ تَقَدَّمَ مِنَ الشُّيُوْخِ فَتَعَالْ حَتَّى نَتَنَاظَرْ فِيهَا مُنَاصَحَةً لَلْمُوَالَى مُوَالَبَةً Let's come together from the angle of giving each other nasiha and not from the angle of I'm going to beat you or you're going to beat me. From the angle of exchanging knowledge. Nasiha. Then he says فَإِنْ يَكُنِ الْحَقُّ فِيهَا مَعَكِ اتَّبَعْتُكَ وَتَرَكْتُ قَوْلِي أَنَا لِيْفْ مَاي سْتَيْتْمَنْتْ وَإِنْ يَكُنِ الْحَقُّ مَعِي If the truth is with me, then you follow me and you leave your statement. لا أريد أن تخطئ ولا أغالبك He said, I don't want you to make a mistake and neither do I want to beat you. Mm-hmm. Rather, like some of the scholars they mention, I, I actually want you to be upon the truth. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I don't yeah. want you to make a mistake, yeah. you know. And to make emphasis uh, for the listeners and viewers, this is not in the Asul yeah, These yeah. are things that are... And discussions, discussions in, in ishtihadi issues. ishtihadi issues even that has its own akhlaq and its own has ways. its own way to do it mm. and from it is this because why do we say this anyway because truth has to be said a lot of brothers they do get involved in these sort of true, back and forth mm. in fiqh issues yeah. Ramadan's about to come up you're yeah. gonna have the famous you know 10 rak'ah 13 yeah. rak'ah mm. yeah. you know yeah. qiyam al no qiyam al mm. <laughs> all of that is gonna yeah. come up so, even odd. Yeah, what is it? <laughs> it's all gonna come. Yeah. So at least, if anything, you need to follow these guidelines, where you say to the person, "I don't want you to make a mistake. I don't want to win against you. Let's just exchange this knowledge." فَإِنْ جَرَ الْأَمْرَ عَلَى هَذَا فَهُوَ حَسَنٌ جَمِيلٌ. He says, "If it's like this, then it's جميل." No. ولكن ما أعز هذا في الناس. True. I look at the, he said, "ما أعز هذا في الناس." Said, Rarely do you find this amongst the people. 100%. People they fall unfortunately into the uh, blameworthy. And uh, Jidal, whereby everyone wants to win and everyone wants to flex their muscles and, and, and have the last say. Allah Musta'ah. Jazakumullah khair. Wallahi, I think this is a beneficial conversation. And I think, uh, mashallah, we covered most of the points as far as the conditions of debating, when to debate, who is to debate, what to stay away from, what to not to stay away from, where is the conditions that it might allow you to, who to never debate. We talked about all of it, alhamdulillah. Wallahi, I wish, so I if anything, was, I wish yeah. there was time. I know there isn't, but I <laughs> advise everyone Go and read up. Mm. If you open any book of Aqeedah, I guarantee you, any of any medium-sized, maybe even small books of Aqeedah, mm-hmm. you'll have chapters on there specifically talking against, warning against debating the people of Al-Bid'ah. No. Okay? Warning against debating them, warning sitting with them, warning exposing yourself to their innovations and the likes. I wish the time allowed for us to just read some of those narrations, mm. yes, so that you could come to a... a you, you, you would realize mm. the danger... So. Of this bab, this bab that we're talking about, let alone the exceptions to the rule that is not for you, especially as a jahil. Mm-hmm. Everything we mentioned now, I think, is might relate to a student of knowledge, but as far as the general folk is concerned, this is not your bab. 
don't debate, don't watch debates, and, and stay away from it. And those narrations that you'll find in the books of the Sunnah one against debate, subhanAllah, there are so many. I advise you to read them because there's no time mm-hmm. to, to mention it right now. Exactly. But yeah, definitely something that some, everyone should go back to. Allah. Allah ya fadik. Tayyib, uh, and with three, three different things. Uh, the first one is closing statements or advices for the listeners for, from you guys. Um, especially since Ramadan is coming up, what are some things you guys might advise with? In short, not not nothing too long because we already went over two hours. Yeah. I, I just gave my closing statement. <laughs> 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 yeah, regarding uh, the debate, I think it's been dealt with. But mm. regarding Ramadan, I would say... Um, what I always advise with is number one, um, uh, read up on the ahkam, read mm. up on the rulings and judgment, judgments regarding the fast, the fiqh of the fasting, mm. and wh- whatnot, and wh- whatever you might need to be prepared for Ramadan so that you won't get stressed and be afraid about have I fasted correctly, have no. not. This is really important because a lot of people forget, like, it's, it's ca- kind of funny too. Every year, people always say, What? Oh my God! It's Ramadan in two, or three days. Yeah, like it's a new phenomenon that's <laughs> never happened. Like, to be yeah. honest, like, subhanallah. Yeah, you knew Ramadan was coming since last Ramadan. So, hey. so <laughs> we need to prepare for it, like yeah. in, a, in in an appropriate manner. And this is the way of the pious president, yani, uh, Salaf al Salih. Mm. They always used to prepare for it, Sahih. either by du'a or by Quran or by dhikr or by Sahih. preparing themselves mentally, physically, emotionally for Ramadan. Sahih. Uh, the other thing is, during Ramadan, you, you get a lot of advices. My advice would be to make time for everything. Mm. Like, clear your schedule. Get Do away with all unnecessary commitments. Mm. Uh, and really, like, focus on your ibadah, your worship. Sorry. Because sometimes, uh, as human beings, we always have commitments. We have this and that, and meeting this one, and sitting with that one, and doing mm. this, and doing that. and uh, a, lot, a lot of things that m- could be cut away, to be honest. Mm. And, all right, I get it. During the, the most of the year, it's not really like that. But during Ramadan, these 30 days are really special and really important. They're not like any other 30 days during the whole year. Mm. So do away with all unnecessary commitments, all those things that steal your time mm. and take away time from something that's really, really important, which is your ibadah mm. and the Qur'an and the dhikr and salat al-layl. And, and really make sure that even as you're going into this blessed month, mm. like take a hard and long look on your schedule and just try and clear it so much as possible. Yeah. For all unnecessary commitments, just so, clear it. Zakallah khair. Barakallah khair. Uh, Allah ya The second thing uh, that I want to talk about or get from you before we leave out and close out: Where can people find your dawa? Where is it? Do you post <laughs> on online, Twitter? Yeah, I'm not really on. T- I, I know sh- this. I know the Swedish brothers use Instagram a lot. Yeah, we use Instagram. I've been meaning to get Twitter, but I'm just been lazy, man. <laughs> uh, Instagram. You're not you know, missing out to anything, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Because the series that was really on Instagram and Facebook, oh, so well. I've got Instagram and Facebook and Jimmy. Twitter, inshallah. Is inshallah, send them to me that way I can put them in the description as well. Allah, ya fadik. Uh, last thing, uh, this is kind of something I came up with. Yeah. Muhammad doesn't really like the idea, but I think it's a good idea. Which is that if we have a guest on, yeah. I would like for you to give us maybe a suggestion of who you think should come on next, or somebody generally talk about the sifat that you might see of somebody who might yeah, want to yeah, come yeah, next. Yeah, yeah. That way we don't leave it to the. I left it to the comments, and you get names from all over the place. Yeah, true, true, yeah. true, true, true. And, and it can get kind of crazy and overwhelming. <laughs> so I was like, Kalas, I bring on people that I would trust yeah. and I think well of, and have them give the well, like, I'm, uh, the, like The, the Dao scene in like UK or America, I'm not really into it, to mm. be honest. Not bad. You can, uh, you can advise with Swedish brothers. Oh, uh, <laughs> Swedish brothers. You already oh, have Saeed Khalaf was here, man. Saeed Khalaf, yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, he's in Saeed Khalaf. <laughs> Where is he? Where is he? He's in the UK. He's in Birmingham. He's in the UK. Then. He, he oh. said he was here in uh, January, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You should have definitely... By, by, like, khalas, that's my that. advice. Khalas, but it is, though. But come, if, if people are not here, though, if they're not in the country, they're yeah, really difficult, is, no? No, maybe we'll, get, maybe we'll get to that point where we can start, like... Pay for the tickets. Flying people out, <laughs> <laughs> as they say. <laughs> May Allah make it easier. Allah, yeah. Allah, yeah. Allah, For the benefit Allah, of the people, Allah. you know, alhamdulillah. But sorry, I, I didn't want to take that away from you. Who, who do you want no, to? No, let's go with Saeed Khalaf. Nah, yeah, yeah, Allah, yeah. Yeah. Allah, yeah. Allah, yeah. Allah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Jazakallah, we appreciate you coming, Akhi. It was a good conversation and it was very beneficial. Important question, Akhi. Yeah. Is that podcast in Ramadan? We're just going to see how it goes. You know, like we took from today getting ready for Ramadan, preparing, leaving off things that's unnecessary. Mm. We'll see. If we have time, <laughs> if it's something we can fit in the schedule, if it's something that, you know, makes sense, I'm okay with it. Allah, I think, I think we should 
نفع متعدي يا اخي اتس ماتش وي بينفيت اور سيلفز اي ثينك ا لوت اوف بيبل وود بينفيت فروم ذا بودكاست اتس ماتر اوف فاكت وي شود دبل يا اخي جو باك تو ويكلي ثينك اونستلي اي يو اجري وذ ذس ها؟ يا اوف كورس اوف كورس ذس از بينفيشال مان اتس نوت ان نيسيسري جزاك الله خير جزاك الله خير الله يحفظك بيبل ساي اي مين اي تيك ذس اوبرتونيتي تو ساي اف يو وونت اف يو وونت ابيسودز رمضان ان شاء الله هيت ذا لايك بتن هيت ذا لايك بتن سبسكرايب Yeah, and we want that comments the comment section to be on fire yes, sure. you know yeah. show oh, us man. show us show us how badly you want episodes in Ramadan stop it stop it we thank everyone for listening and tuning in and until next time inshallah wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh